Good evening, everybody. Today is March 7th. It is the Battery Park City Committee of Manhattan Community Board 1. Welcome. My name is Justine Cucci. I'm the chair of the committee. This is my co-chair, Jeff Galloway. Jeff Galloway. And um, we've got a nice presentation set up for today. So why don't we just roll right into it? Um, we've got, uh, <coughs> sorry, Katie McDougall is here as the Battery, South Battery Park City Construction Community Liaison. And we welcome you, Katie. Thank you very much for having me. So, why don't you come stand here? No, no, no. no. The owl, but come sit close. Yeah. It's like the district service cabinet meetings where we're all up against the wall. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. right. No, no. Come on in. So, am I looking in the right direction now? You are. Excellent. You see them. Yeah. So, with the South Battery Park City Resiliency Project, um, again, construction is underway. We're on track to finish on time. Um, we send out construction notices every two weeks. You can sign up by emailing us at outreach at southbpcresiliency.com. Um, and those will, that will give you um, the mailing list for all of our construction notices and travel advisories for when there are you know, lane closures or night work. Um, and additionally, um, I know that there's been some conflation of Northwest Battery Park City Resiliency Project and South. South mm -hmm. Battery Park is the, um, the ongoing construction between first place and um, and Broadway down down by the water, including Wagner Park and Museum of Jewish Heritage. Um, additionally, I know we received some questions about the site lights um, for the South Battery Park City Resiliency Project. Though I spoke with the construction team, those lights are um, pointed down, and they're a necessary. Um, the lights at Pier A and Battery Area are lights that are part of our project. They're cast downwards onto the construction site. Um, as a necessary site security and public safety measure, um, because this area does have um, publicly accessible areas on the south, east, and west borders of the construction site. So as a result, we want to make sure that, that area is well lit um, to avoid any kind of um, unpleasant interactions between the public and the site. But if there are any additional questions or concerns, um, I know that there were some questions about the type of lights and how bright they were, and I can touch base with uh, the construction team about maybe getting something a little bit less um, ambient. Yeah. Let me just jump in. Go ahead, jump in. Yeah. Welcome. So I think this may be your first or second time doing it. Just for the benefit of the folks who may be joining us anew, um, we have uh, five, month five monthly updates that just has graciously and then Jeff and uh, Zach have graciously agreed to kind of have on the agenda on a kind of recurring basis. So the last time we did this, I think was in January. 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 Um, but, you know, we have bi-monthly updates to the community here just for the benefit of the community to understand the process of uh, the South Battery Park City Resiliency Project and where it is in its, in its uh, construction. As Katie had noted, you can uh, sign up at any time if you want to get on the list of the bi-weekly updates that just go out, mailed out automatically to you, and it will just give you kind of just a quick bullet points uh, about kind of what to expect over the next couple of weeks. For the most part, it is not with a ton of public impact because the Wagner Park portion of the project is mostly enclosed. Uh, as Katie had noted, though, we did get a couple of uh, questions. You know, Mary and emailed me earlier in the week as well about some of the lights uh, on the historic battery park side south of Pier A, which uh, we'll look to address and see if they can be redirected in a way so as not to be as bright. But they are, as I understand it, essentially light that is replacing the light that would have been on the park lights before the construction started. And if you want to make sure that from a safety perspective, the appropriate areas of the park are well lit so folks who are navigating their way around the construction and through the open public portion of the park can do so in a safe and secure manner. So that's kind of the context. Um, Katie's here to answer questions now or at any point, just email the address or you can send them to me and I can work with Katie to make sure they get there. Um, and then obviously, I guess it's March, so maybe in May or so we'll be back again for your, yeah. your next update. But nonetheless, I want to want to take every time from the committee if there no, are questions. That's perfect. So, no, I mean, I guess what I'm going to say is um, we had the same type of a complaint with bright lights. It was actually strobing at one point, but that's not they got yeah. at what, around Wagner Park. Same explanation was given, you know, security, safety, replacing the lights that were there. And the authority and the team were able to come up with a solution and a fix that made it a lot better. So I guess what I'm going to say to you now is, and I'm, we look and see if anybody wants to talk in the, uh, 
here of everybody in, in the meeting that is raising a hand. Um, at this point, I don't see anybody, but um, okay, Brittany's here, so maybe Brittany will have something to say, but we don't, I don't know. She, she would have been able to have a comment on it. Um, but I just would like to have that same level of reaction and connection. And I will say something that I've spoken to people. I did not think it was within the purview of the Battery Park City Authority. I thought it was whether that the. Yeah, when I first got, when I thought it was the Battery Coastal Resilience Bonds, when I checked, it's actually, that's not further south. It's actually right on the other side. So it's the portion of the project that stretches across so, the northern edge of Battery Park. Um, because we have to get from high point to high point. So that's this is the point that goes across the across. And goes out to which State makes Street me happy. Battery place, right? But that's why we're here. We can talk to you here. We can address it. So yeah, my my reaction was, I'll talk to you and see if you can help us connect and lead right. us on well, and fix it. Fine. So now I'm saying to you is, let's see what we can do. We'll monitor um, it, see if there's a way to uh, sure to adjust it. I don't want to make any promises that I can't keep, but I will certainly. Katie and I can take it back to the team and see if there's a way to adjust. Can, and I appreciate yes. it, and um, that's great. And, and anybody who has any questions. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, how far along are we on the seawall portion of the construction? Let me double. Uh, let me double check with our um, construction team. Do you want to know like when this puzzle is estimated to be completed? Or? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, the, the, uh, as I understand it, the flood wall is going to be ultimately varied by all sorts of uh, burns and whatnot because the elevation is basically being raised. Um, but um, I'd be interested to know when the structural part of the flood wall itself is expected to be completed. So I would have answered that would provide all kind of resiliency protection, even though the place may look ugly at that point, but at least the resiliency would be in place. I see what you're saying. Okay. I know we're continuing some, um, you know, the flood wall insulation is continuing. Um, I think we touch base with our team and see if that fit um, the right state. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, anybody else? I don't see any hands raised in the. Do we? No. Nobody in the audience has their hand raised. A few minutes, sure. So um, we're going to move on. Let's <coughs> talk now about the, um, part two, which is the Battery Park City Parks Operations Spring Heat Preview. Yes. So okay. Ryan Torres. Put your camera on, unmute yourself, because I think we made you a panelist. Uh, great. Ryan, can you hear us? Oh my gosh, can you see me? Can you hear me? Is this working? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for being here, and Justine and Zach and Jeff again for kind of working with us. We do this, we try to do this. We have X number of years now. We're getting to actually, at long last, a pretty good groove about certain parts of the year, certain briefings happening at certain points when they make most sense. Mm -hmm. And what Ryan has done for the past few years for us, very graciously, for invite and assent, is to come in the spring, spring up, or just have gotten into the spring season, to talk about what some folks might expect to see in the parks um, as the spring springs, as it were, right? <laughs> as spring is about to spring. Um, so, for folks who made a just kind of reiterate. Um, a lot of work that goes on year round in our parks and public spaces. The great work of Ryan and her team on an operations perspective, horticulture perspective, masonry, repairs, carpenters, all the, all the work that they do. And then also to answer any questions or field any concerns you have. Uh, and then do some reporting out as well about things that we know we've heard that we want to make sure that we are um, kind of getting you some updates on. So with that, I will turn it over to Ryan, who's our Vice President of uh, Parks Operations. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can. Great. I can't believe it. I, I feel like I'm not sure if I was here yesterday or a year ago, I, but I'm happy. I'm happy to be back. Um, and I appreciate you guys giving me um, some some time in your in your meeting. I know you guys have a busy schedule, so I'll try to I'll try to keep it brief, but happy to elaborate or answer any questions at the end or anything along the way. So. Um, thank you again for having me. For those that might be new to the community or to this meeting, I'm Ryan. I'm the Vice President of Parks Operations for the Battery Park City Authority. I oversee the team that manages the open spaces within Battery Park City. So happy to be here. Uh, next slide. Is that good? Is that a good method? 
Good. Okay, great. And so I'm just going to um, talk a bit about Parks Operations and who we are for anybody's benefit who might be new to the community or new to um, this meeting. Kind of looking back at some of the things we do because it's really easy to forget at times. Looking ahead at some of the things that you can look for our team to be doing with, like hours of operations, things that are on our radar that are probably on yours too. So I'd like to address those as well. Some brief um a brief conversation about um, some of the collaboration that Parks Operations has been doing with Real Property Department and the new resiliency projects. And of course, I have to talk about compost, zero waste, and our wildlife within Battery Park City. And I'll round it off with just some of the ways that we can all keep in touch with each other. Next slide. And so, yay, my team. And so Parks Operations is just one of the divisions that make up the entire team of Battery Park City Authority, and we're often the public facing um, ones alongside the Parks Programming and Community Operations Department. We're about 55 people strong, and you'll often see my team out in the parks wearing blue tops similar to what I'm wearing and khaki pants, so you'll be able to recognize them as per the pictures as well. Happy for everybody to stop and say hi. We're the team that maintains the 36 acres of open space within Battery Park City. This includes over five miles of bench slats, slats three public uh, restrooms, two community spaces, hundreds of miles of pathways. Next slide. Over a thousand street trees and an equivalent number of park trees, 40,000 plus bulbs planted each year, an average of 100 pounds of food waste that we collect from the community. Thank you. 300 land cans, 50 recycling cans collected daily, three dog runs that we see, lots of parks that we've known to come and love like Teardrop and um, the Esplanade, over a thousand light poles. And we also maintain all this and we also remove all the snow when it happens. Luckily, you know, we haven't been, we haven't had a couple of good, had a couple of good years, but when the snow does fall, we're the team that's out there. And so we work every day to keep the parks and the public spaces to the standards in which we've all, or everybody who lives, works, and visits, Battery Park City has come to expect. And so just um, next slide, briefly how we do that is that we are, we prioritize consistency and preventative maintenance. And so the larger of the two departments that make up the Parks Operations Division is our maintenance team. They're further broken up into the maintenance technicians. They're the ones that are doing the cleaning and the upkeep of the open spaces. And then we have our trades. Those are the ones that have specialized skills such as carpentry, masonry, um, and or electrical skills. And they're the ones that are taking care of the structures like the benches, the play equipment, the water fountains, the water play features, the hardscapes, the pavers, the dog runs, the playgrounds, the fixtures, all the light poles, even down to the sinks, the faucets, and the hand dryers that you're using in the restrooms. They're the ones opening and closing the restrooms and the Irish Hunger Memorials every day. They oversee the safety and cleanliness of the open spaces. They manage all of the waste within Battery Park City, not just the collecting of what's in the parks, but also the three compactors that many of the residential buildings bring their trash to every day. And then, of course, our two bridges, West Thames and Tribeca, um, the, the maintenance teams ensure that those are safe and clean for everybody. Next slide. And then our other department um, is our horticulture team, and they're the ones that manage the softscapes, as we like to call it. That's the landscapes and the trees, and they also oversee the compost. So they're taking care of the South Cove, Rector Park East and West, the Esplanade, Kowski Plaza, Belvedere Plaza, Irish Hunger Memorial, Rockefeller Park, Teardrop Park, North and South, Murray Street Triangle, the ball fields and the eastern border. I feel like I'm missing one, but I, I'll think of it, I'm sure, when I'm when I'm done with this. But all of the gardens in Battery Park City, all of the park and street trees, the, hort te the horticulture team is overseeing. They manage the compost, not just the food waste, but the garden debris and the dog waste compost that we do. They do the watering, the planting of the perennials, trees and shrubs and all of those bulbs. All of the mulching, weeding and pruning that you see is all thanks to our horticulture team. Um, next slide. I think we'll just go through these quickly. Just some just some pictures of the team. You can do the next slide. There's James taking care of the lily pond. We're putting up some fences or maybe taking them down some some tree pruning in the middle there. And of course, our, our pride benches by our carpenter Carlos on the right. 
Uh, next slide. Power washing, especially as the weather breaks, you'll probably see the team out there more and more, whether it's on the um, pathways or in the dog runs, we're kind of out there power washing, getting all of that winter stuff off of um, the hardscapes. Madeline there in the corner in the, in the forklift. Next slide. And just some more of our team here hard at work, getting rid of what little snow we got, knock on wood, um, this winter, and then just kind of doing some upkeep on some of our trash cans. And so um, next slide. And I just, I can't not take this opportunity. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, this good, this good. To acknowledge just some of the staff on the parks operations team that have been with the, the authority for 25 years, and in some cases, a little bit more and the dedication and the care that they have for this community and what keeps it looking the way that they do. And so hopefully some of these faces aren't new. And if they are, I, I, I invite you all to go for a walk and check them out. We have um, on the top left here, we have Nancy um, Boyvid. She's overseeing Teardrop Park. Below that is Betsy um, Atzal. She's one of our uh, maintenance technician supervisors. So she's taking care of that team. Um, below Betsy, right to the left there, is um, Evan Helio Villalobos. He's on our horticulture team. On the top right, our dream team of Manuel Rivera on the right and James DePadua on the left, planting uh, one of the new trees. And below that is Gene Schwartz, who um, managed Wagner Park and is now obviously overseeing some of the other spaces, but we'll go back into Wagner Park when that's open. So um, just wanted to um, take the time to to say that. Next slide. And so I don't know about everybody else, but I often get stuck thinking about everything that I don't do and everything that I need to do. And um, sometimes that can be overwhelming. And so I just like to take a, take a moment to look back and reflect on some of the things that we were able to accomplish um, last year and, and recently. And so these were just a few things that came to top of mind. And Hopefully I'm not missing anything um, too major, but we did have a record breaking year for our food waste compost in 2023. So that's really exciting. Almost 5,000 um, the plastic planting pots that we receive from the um, plants that we order each year, we were able to ensure that they were upcycled or reused instead of ending up at the landfill. We were able to perform three waste audits throughout the entire park, which is always um, an adventure. We planted four new trees. I'm sorry, my dog is like <laughs> drinking his water to the left of me, sorry. Um, really successful pumpkin and holiday tree composting collection. I believe, Nick, you can correct me, but I believe it was just over 2,000 holiday trees collected this year. So right in line. Yes. Oh, yeah, all of that is 100% used in our composting program and is vital to our composting program. So I thank you for all of that. We were able to install a no mow lawn at Murray Street Triangle in an effort to just try to get that space looking a little um, differently and also increase some um, wildlife to call Murray Street Triangle home. So looking forward to seeing what happens with that this year. Like I mentioned before, over 40,000 flower bulbs were planted. We continue to monitor the spotted lanternfly. Um, I feel like we don't talk about it as much, but it's still there. And we, we continue to um, make sure that we can do our part. We um, mitigate um, any rodents or rats specifically in Battery Park City using our dry ice or rat ice applications. So we continue to do that. We were able to replace the timber benches in South Cove, which is on that lower area which was great because they were really in need. We installed a couple of native bee hotels um, to complement our bee, our honey bee, um, honey beehive that we have in Rockefeller Park. So that's great to make sure all are welcome. We partnered with the American Kennel Club. They had a event at the Javits Center, their Meet the Breeds, and we were able to collect all of the dog waste from all of their dogs and compost it here at Battery Park City. So that was um, a first and really excited. And then we were able to. That's really cool, Brian. When you, when you told me about that, that's really cool. When you told me about that, I couldn't believe it. That's really like, that's, yeah, that's, that's, like, that's next thing. I mean, it was really, it was, you know, it was, it gave me a little agita, like, just like, is this really, is this really going to work? But it, it did. And, 
Um, and it was really, it was really cool to see not just my team embrace it all, right? Because like what are, we're talking about hauling hundreds of pounds of dog waste from the Javits to Battery Park City, but even the American Kennel Club was really receptive. They were really interested in it. Their participants were really interested. Of course, our partners at the Javits was ecstatic to be able to do it. So yeah, it was, it was, it was hopefully not once in a lifetime, but glad to, glad to have done it. Um, Maybe yeah, yeah, right. Maybe, you know, if they come back every year, we'll see. Um, and then, of course, we were able to finish our permeable paver um, project that uh, last summer, which was which was stressful, but great in the end. So um, next slide. And so just to look ahead a little bit and hopefully spring really is coming. Um, had a couple of days that that are promise it so I'm I'm anxiously awaiting it so starting May 1st and continuing through October the team will be on site until 9 30 p.m currently they're here till 7 p.m this means that the restrooms and the Irish hunger memorial will stay open later and that our spaces are continually monitored as they're used more you'll see um, some new faces out out in the parks as we onboard our seasonal staff to help support our team um, for all of the visitors and people that come and use our open spaces. For the second year, we've been able to keep selected lawns open for the winter, which wasn't always the case, but we continue to close lawns um, from time to time that need a little extra TLC and a little extra rest to really kind of spring back and be ready for the season. But happy to say that mid-April, and I even got a date of April 15th, so weather weather depending, but April 15th, we'll probably be taking all of the fences down, so all of the lawns will be open. That's always a real um, official start to the spring in my eyes. And so um, also some of you may have taken notice to some of the action that was happening at the southernmost island on North End Avenue. And so this area has been a site for operations since it was built some, you know, three or so decades ago, largely by the horticulture team. That's who um, mostly utilizes it. They do, um, they've always done and will continue to do compost that we store our plants that we get that ultimately end up back into the gardens and other supplies such as planters and fences. And I'm really excited to see how much more compost we can produce with the efficiency of the new um, landscape that the um, spaces has able to give us. Um, and then again, just you know, being able to produce that much more compost allows us to put it back into the garden. So I'm really anxious to you know see what that's going to be. Um, and although this is a parks programming and community operations managed um, thing, I want to let you know that the volleyball courts will be coming um, back in action in the upcoming weeks as we do collaborate with them to, to get it all out there. So, um, you know, the weather matters, right? It, you know, we want to make sure that it's not going to be too cold or rainy, but mid-April is probably a really safe bet for that to come out as a matter of fact. I even got an email from the from the team requesting certain dates for things. So that's definitely happening soon. Um, another, yeah, yeah, we right, we love the volleyball court. And so yeah. Um, another thing worth mentioning here, although not to the credit of parks operations, um, again to parks programming and community operations, but we did collaborate in building a few new raised beds for the children's garden. And so we're really excited to see what that program and all of the kids and what they're gonna be growing and what they'll be able to accomplish with those. So- um, Ryan, where is it? Where are they? The the, so, yeah, so the, you know where the children's garden is, right? I do not. It's Rockefeller Park, right, children? Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Rockefeller Park, just east of the North Lawn, like the North, the North Meadow, in like the northeast corner of the lawn, right across the pathway behind the gate is the children's garden. Okay. Yeah, That's and they nice. and the programming yes. team, yeah, they meet the kids a handful of times. I think that starts in April and goes until November. Children's Spring those classes that they do, that's where they hold them. Yeah. yeah, I think they call them Young Sprouts. Craig will Young kill Sprouts. Yeah. Okay. yeah, right, it's so cute. Um, anyway, so they have like maybe anywhere between 10 to 15 beds in total 
but the end too, we were able to create raised beds just for accessibility and, you know, a little variety and how, and how the children can um, garden. So it'll, it'll, they, you know, they seem really excited about it, which makes me really excited about it. So um, just wanted to make note of that as well. We're also changing some of the benching that's around there, the benches that are around there to better accommodate all of the, you know, the children and how they learn. So um, it's a nice, it's a nice little space. Um, I just want to remind everybody as the warmer weather gets closer, we um, love all dogs in Battery Park City and we welcome them. I myself am a dog owner. Um, and so they are welcome to visit any of our three dog runs throughout Battery Park City, each with their own unique experience. Um, but when not in those dog runs, we ask that they're leashed and that they're not on the lawns or the garden beds or in the tree planters. Um, this in an effort to just try to keep the health of those plants so that we can um, not have to spend the time in kind of getting them back to a healthy level or replace them. So just a reminder for that, I think we're going to be doing some updating to our It's a Dog Life brochure. So Nick, I'm sure once we have that out, we'll share that. Um, Hopefully you're seeing a difference in some of the landscapes as we continue to work towards a more native plant palette, which is a more resilient landscape that supports our wildlife. Each year we plant new perennials and shrubs, some because they don't work out and others because we are just replacing them with a more native and or resilient variety. And we've been able to maintain an 80% or higher native plant selection with each order that we do every year. So always trying to push our limits there. And then I know our kiddos are just waiting for that warm weather to come so that they can jump into all of the water features that we have in Battery Park City. So we too are anxious for that weather to break so that we can start ensuring that everything is working the way that it's intended. So um, we always try to go for a Memorial Day um, opening. And so that too will be our goal. So looking forward to that as a reminder, we have our play features, our water play features in Rockefeller Park, Teardrop Park, West Thames and Kowski Playground. I think that's it. Um, so that'll be really great. And then of course, um, appearing for more years than I can probably count again, our hanging baskets along South End Avenue, looking forward to, you know, continuing to improve the streetscape there. Next slide. Yeah. And so I know after listening to some of and all of these accomplishments that we do and all of the day to day stuff that my team is responsible <laughs> for, but it doesn't mean that from time to time we get tripped up on things. And I want you to know that um, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about a few things that I'm sure you guys have noticed. And just to let you know that we've noticed as well and that we're working on trying to get these things back to the way that we we all want them to be. And so there are, I think, a few blue lights out in South Cove. Specifically, I'm talking about the ones closer to the water. Um, these are tricky. And so um, with the tide rising more um, often, they are often underwater along with the, the wiring and the components. And so um, not only is it tricky to kind of get to them because we got to kind of hang off, hang off the esplanade there, but um, they're just constantly underwater. But we are aware that they're out, and so it's on our radar to to get them fixed. Um, so I just wanted to let you know. And if there's any other lights out, you can always let me know. The uh, cargo net bridge at Rockefeller Park has been out for some time now, but that too is going to be getting replaced. I know that um, with the upcoming warmer weather, everybody's going to be out. So my goal is to have that done and taken care of. Similarly, the last set of swings, swing sets, swings, I'm not trying to say it, um, and, and Rockefeller is, is uh, missing, you'll probably notice. And so this is one of those um, issues that, that, that becomes a little perplexing, but definitely working towards finding a, um, a long-term solution and getting that going. So of course, with the warmer weather upon us, the the stress, uh, you know, that I feel of getting it done is there. And I just want you uh, all to, to know that. Share. Sure. Yes. And then I feel it. I feel it. I do. Happy to hear your thoughts, but I do feel it. 
Um, I just also want to know, acknowledge that I know the uh, teardrop water play surface um, is in need of some repair. And so I, um, we're working currently, um, you know, even as today, we had meetings about it on getting that done. So of course, our goal is to get that done in time for the opening of all of our water features. So um, just just want to acknowledge some of those things. And if I've missed anything, I'm, I'm happy to talk about those. Hopefully there's not a big list. And then um, I just wanted to let everybody know about the permeable pavers is that we completed it last summer successfully, and it's been a really great project. I can report that there is minimal or maybe no puddling on these surfaces, which is really um, great. That was the intent. And this information will be used to determine future areas that we can use them all. So I appreciate all your patience on um, last year's project. Next slide. And so I know resiliency is the big topic of conversation and my team is not immune to that topic as well. And I just wanna let you know that we're busy too, working with real property on the upcoming resiliency projects, both the South and the North, uh, Northwest, excuse me. Topics such as materiality, landscape and planning are just some of the involvements that we've had. And we really look forward to what the future of Battery Park City um, is and for it to be more resilient. Next slide. So Battery Park City Authority, um, we have three sources of um, things that we can compost. That's the food waste that everybody drops off at our green bins um, that we collect every day and then turn into compost that goes back out into the garden. A quick reminder, yes, to fruits, vegetables, coffee, tea, houseplants. No to meats, bones, oils, fats, um, dairy, things, things of that nature. And so um, I know on your, you know, on Nick's report is all of the locations. Um, and if anybody has any thoughts about where it'd be even more convenient, happy, happy to hear that. All of the garden debris that the team collects, whether it's cutbacks or removal of plants or whatever it might be, all of that gets composted and reintroduced back into Battery Park City. So that's another source that we compost. And then of course we um, compost with the dog waste that we collect. Here's a picture on the right of one of the newer green receptacles on the uh, South Esplanade. And so um, Battery Park City has been composting since the nineties and continues to be a, and it continues to be a priority for the team. Each year we test our limits on what we can compost and how much we can compost. For 2023, I told you we had a record year. That means that we, and that was just the food compost we produced over 72,000 pounds of compost, which is 1,100 more than 2022, which was a record breaking year. So not sure what 2024 is going to be. Maybe we're going to be giving out compost uh, to everybody for all I know, but we're going to keep producing it for as long as we get it. Um, since we started our dog waste compost program in 2019, we've collected nearly 10,000 pounds of dog waste, if you can believe that. Each year, we steadily increase the amount that we can take, but I'll tell you now, we can take more. And so i um, happy to take everybody's dog waste. I mean, who would have thought that would have been a, a sentence, but here we are. Um, just a quick reminder that we can't take them when they're in the plastic bags. Obviously, plastic can't be composted, and I can't um, can't really take the time to take it out of the plastic bags. And so we ask that if you do want to participate in the program, that you put it in one of the green bins. All are located in each dog run, and then there's another three along the South Esplanade. More to come as we um, introduce more out in the community in the upcoming years. We offer newspaper that's in the slot in lieu of the plastic bags. So happy to, you know, you can pick it up that way and just throw the whole thing um, in. Or if you have a scooper, you can just use that um, and, and do it that way. We do collect the newspaper from local residential buildings and local cafes. So even that is repurposed and composted back into, back into the gardens. So I'm um, really great. I think we have a new, not I think, we definitely do. And Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, we have a new composting email. So for all your composting questions, concerns, yep. or thoughts, 
It's compost at bpca.ny.gov. Is that right? I think that's right. I think that's right. I will, we'll we'll report back for sure. But we've gotten a bunch of emails so far, and it's it makes it makes us really happy when when people have questions or you know, hey, can I compost this? It it makes us really happy. So feel free to use it. Uh, next slide. Almost done, I promise. And so zero waste is something that we work towards every single day, not just for ourselves when we're working, but also within the work that we do. And so as a reminder, Battery Park City Authority has a certification for zero waste at its 75 Battery Place facility. <laughs> Excuse me. And building on that, we've set new goals which are to become zero waste certified in our operations and in our open spaces. That means we need to divert 90% from the landfill. Now, this is no easy feat, and I've been working and we've all been working on this for the better part of two years, but we continue to make strides in um, trying to work towards those. The hardest part is figuring out ways to communicate our goals to all those who live, work, and visit Battery Park City. So happy to uh, hear any of your thoughts on how we might be able to do that. Um, we want to remind people to the extent that that is possible that you take out whatever you bring into Battery Park City. And if you can't, then you use the right receptacles, you recycle or compost or, you know, when in doubt, throw it away in the landfill, the black, the black cans. Um, the waste audits that we perform throughout the years are when we literally take all of the landfill cans and we bring it back to our 75 battery facility and we sort through them bag by bag and putting them in category, categorized areas. Um, and so what we find is that there's a tremendous amount of dog waste that ends up in our landfills, about 100 pounds every day that um, ends up in the landfill that we're happy to compost if people, you know, if we can get the word out and get them to participate. Continue to have lots of coffee cups, but I know that that's a that's a struggle a little bit for us all. And then, of course, trying to figure out ways how maybe we can, in, um, I don't know, talk to or influence or help with some of the local restaurants or food, uh, fast food um, places on um, some of the things that they use, because, of course, we find a lot of that in our trash as well. So we will continue those goals and we'll continue to report back as we succeed or not but i you know we will not give up and we um look forward to becoming zero waste sooner than later i'm sure next slide and so um the wildlife in battery park city it's, it's it's an important topic to me it's an important topic to my team and i know it's an important topic to the community and so on the left we have a little picture there of our i naturalist page i naturalist is a free app that many of my staff if not all use and it allows them to take pictures of wildlife that they see in Battery Park City. Once you upload it to the iNaturalist app, if you're in Battery Park City, it automatically loads to our um, page because we have like a geotag or something like that. Um, so all you got to do is be in Battery Park City, have the app, take a picture and upload it and, and then that's it. Um, and so we use these observations to monitor the different um, species that we see. And our goal is to increase those species. In 2023, we had 112 new species above and beyond what we already had um, observed. That's not to say all of them are brand new. Some of them were just maybe discovered for the first time. But it is exciting to see the increase in biodiversity <laughs> through this um, app. It also is a way for us to connect with the larger scientific community, which is important to many of my team, because that um, this app is used globally and that information is used for a variety of reasons. And an added benefit is that this, you know, citizen science kind of aspect, and it allows us to connect with the community and the community to connect with the wildlife that calls Battery Park City home. And so on that note, on the right, side i just want to remind everyone here at battery park city authority we try to keep our wildlife wild so we have this keep it wild campaign um and so um, our goal is to support the wildlife and with our plants and our maintenance habits we plant native plants that support their life cycles and is a food and shelter source for them um, we may choose not to cut back certain things or leave 
uh, the leaves during certain times um, in an effort to support the wildlife. We don't use toxic chemicals, not just for our pest management, but for our cleaning practices as well. That said, we ask that people don't feed the wildlife, that you observe them from afar. And if you do encounter an injured or sick animal to contact the DEC in our local region. And we can, I think we report that too, Nick, right? That's on our regular thing. Yes. Yeah, so that's, um, yeah, the DEC, they're, uh, we're in constant contact with them. Yeah, there's a New York City region and, um, Environmental conservation. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, the Department of Environmental Conservation. I apologize. Um, next slide. And I, we're getting to the end here. And so just a couple of ways that we not only can you keep in touch with or stay up to date with what Battery Park City Authority um, is doing, but also what the Parks Operations team is doing. We love getting on social media, whether it's the What's in Bloom on Wednesdays or, you know, just our team out there. Um, you know, working and it ends up on social media. So you can catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and the, is that threads? I don't even know what that is that but Yeah, apparently that. Sure. And so um, um, the community newsletter, uh, I know Nick works really hard. I work really hard on the parks happenings and trying to get this forward looking kind of um, snapshot of what we're up to. Our website, believe it or not, I'm constantly on it. I gather information from our website. I find it really helpful. And then Nick, God bless you, Nick. You know, here's his, per, you know, his cell day or night. You can always call Nick. And trust me, you know, if I said, yeah. Ryan's like, you want to put your cell phone number on this person? I said, Ryan, it's on every report I gave her. Your they have it anyway. And I can, I can tell you that if you call Nick, and you have some concerns about the, the trees, the parks, the playgrounds, anything parks operations related, I get the message. So it comes around, it comes around. Um, also another way that um, we can also stay in touch is um, we always welcome our volunteers. Last year we had over um, 100 volunteers and so you know, we we enjoy spending the time with people who want to hang out with us and, and learn a little bit and help us do the work that we do. So if you're looking for any of those opportunities, you can also give Nick a call because you got his number. So um, and then, of course, he'll be sure to share that with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just a quick reminder that all residents and visitors can always report quality of life issues to our command center which is available 24 seven, 365. You can get them by phone, 212-945-7233. Email them, bpcallied at bpca.ny.gov. I, I often email them when I see things, or you can hang um, go check them out in person at 200 Rector. Of course, for emergencies though, you should always call 911. Next slide. Thank you, and questions? Thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah, I, you know, maybe, maybe took a little bit of time, but I think that was a lot of information. So um, I thank you for, for allowing me the opportunity to speak with everyone. I know I have questions. I'll wait till the end. Just check and see if anybody online does too, but I'm going to go through the room first. So Sarah, then Marianne. Great. Um, I heard you say, and I'm not quite sure if this was just limited to compost or not. Waste pickup from residential buildings. Do you do that? So maybe you were talking. What we do is we operate the compactors. There, there are three compactors throughout Battery Park City. Most of the residential buildings, not all, but most of the residential buildings bring um, their their waste to one of our compactors that we operate every day, which allows them to not have to put it on the street, not have to keep it in their basements or wherever. Does Gateway Plaza, I'm sorry. Gateway Plaza have the buildings? Yeah. Gateway Plaza yes. has its own compactor, so no. Yes, but they throw, um, in addition to garbage, they throw recycling down there. So, yes, yeah, so the recycling is still done by DSNY the old fashioned way because that, that doesn't necessarily attract rodents and um you know doesn't doesn't require lots of visits with dsny so we don't we don't do anything with the recyclables because that that kind of just gets put out once a week and 
DSNY is fine with that. What we're really trying to do is keep garbage literally off the streets, even if they're in containers, even if they're in bags, just to minimize the rodent population and any sources of food for them, but also... I'm sorry, the fact that Gateway mixes the two things doesn't bother anybody. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they shouldn't be mixing it. I'm definitely not, um, you know, I definitely am not Except the DSNY. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I, can, the I, I, can, I can reach out to them and see if there's anything that I can do to help with educating some of them and their, and their team on um, what is recyclable and what isn't recyclable. But ultimately... Frustrated by this, I hear about it. Okay, yeah, I mean, Nick, we have a good relationship. Do all that, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll talk to. Yeah, them. I mean, ultimately, I can't. You know, I I don't I don't um, govern. You know what buildings do, but I am absolutely willing to. You know, educate and help show that doing the right thing doesn't always mean extra, extra work. So I think we have a really great relationship with Gateway and the management team. I know that we communicate with them often on, on the composting bins. So we can just add another level um, about recycling because they definitely have options. Maybe they're not aware of it. So I'm happy to share with them. Do you have, um, to follow up on that, do you have um, composting bins for those items, plastic and cans and not mm -hmm. bottles that, that yeah, recycling you can mean. pick up. Sorry, you mean recycling composting wouldn't be plastic. Oh, but yeah, in addition to the composting <laughs> bins, also the um, regular recyclables. So we do have recycling cans out in the open spaces because that's what we, you know, that's what we manage. So we do. Yes, we see those. Yeah. And then if, if, a building should have its own system um, of of how they recycle and and how they sort that out. I I a see lot of my neighbors they take out their recycling glass and cans and plastic to yeah. those bins. So I'm gonna I'll, I'll reach out. Nick and I will reach out to the to the management, and I'm happy to I'm happy to help them. Um, again, I I don't. Um, I don't manage the building's waste, but I'm I'm happy to, you know, educate anybody about it all. So I'm yeah. sure they know. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a question, and thank you, Ryan. This was good. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about lost and found. Hmm. It's a, 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 a framed picture was left in one of the West Thames Bridge elevators. Now, mm. I would think that could go to the Allied office at 200 Rector as a lost and found item. Mm -hmm. Does yeah. that make sense? Absolutely. Can. So, yeah. 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 And yeah. I know, I think I know that the authority doesn't keep the elevators working, even though you kind of maintain everything else. Mm -hmm. Am I right? The maintenance to make the elevators work if they break down. No, it's, I know. The, it's the authority's responsibility to do repairs of elevator repairs. Yeah, so I am responsible for making sure that the West Thames elevator is operable. Um, I'm not. Street, both yeah, sides. Finish. Both yeah. sides, east and west. And so, if you have any problems with those, you can give me a call. I'm not. I'm not responsible for the opera, um, the Tribeca Bridge um mechanical i do clean it it's always a funny relationship i do clean it and we do check on it but i i'm not in charge of that but to the extent that when it is out because my team's there every day we do contact the doe to let them know because ultimately it's it is on them to get going okay thank you ryan yeah thank you um anybody else in the room okay so i have a question well since we talked about the west end bridge I've noticed that the stairs are not in great shape. When you're looking at the actual stairs, it's when I say not in great shape. Um, I don't know what the what the material is that covers the stairs, but it, the tread, the, the treads, but but they, it just looks it's, gross because it's ripped up or yeah. it, it needs to be painted or refinished or something. The treads on the steps. On the steps, and then even I think across the on the span places, too. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And th and that's you guys then, yeah. That is that is us. Yeah. And so um yes, you know, with new 
structures come new problems, right? And things that maybe we weren't, you know, necessarily anticipating on how they were going to wear or materials that we needed. And so, as you can imagine, of course, it's a specialized like paint, but we do have it. And so once that weather breaks, we're going to kind of scrape that down, paint that up and, and get that get back going. But I could have, I could have added that too. So thank you, Justine, for, for mentioning it. No, no, that's great. Um, so now something that was an old issue, and, and I don't have, like, I didn't know about the children's gardens. My kids are too old. <laughs> Battery Brook City, the ball fields. Um, there was an issue in the fall going into winter about the stags of the, um, I don't know the bollards, but the, uh, the seats, padding. Whatever. The padding. padding. Yes. Thank you. For yes. Yes. Yeah. That is that has not been repaired, but is is in the works. Actually, Craig um, from community um, from programming and community operations, Craig and I are working closely on the procurement for that contract to get those done. Thank you again. That too should have been there because that is not that has not gone unnoticed and is in the works. That would be great because with the soccer seasons, we're I, agree. Long I see it. Far, it doesn't yeah. look, doesn't look no, well. they, they look pretty far it fine. It takes a little bit of time, but yes, we're aware of it and it's a uh, property. Okay. And yes. then I haven't heard lately about garbage collecting in ball fields. I just haven't heard. And like I said, I don't go there at this point. Um, so that would be something to check and see. And I know uh, who's that's you guys cleaning up, whether it's cans, paper, you know, potato chip bags, whatever, stuff like that. That's you. That is that is a little bit of definitely a little bit of us, but the um, parks, the parks programming and community operations team, they should be in the office kind of regularly. And part of their role is to just kind of get out there and pick up a little bit. But if there's definitely like a mess that seems needed, you can call Nick and he'll alert my team. And to the extent that we're there, we'll, we'll definitely go take care of it. That would be great. Like I said, I heard it um, in the fall. Um, not lately, but it's also been cold and I don't know what's been going on. Yeah. All right. So thank you for that. Um, you told me when the grass is going to open up. Question about the permeable pavers. Mm -hmm. Break it there in place. So you have different areas where you've got different styles of permeable pavers. Yeah. I'm assuming from your report, every style works well, right? That's what that, it seems like every style works well. Mm -hmm. Will you have some sort of a, a, a community vote or something where you can take a survey? Which ones do we like best? Number one, I mean, I don't know, I'm sort of that to you as an idea because what I've heard from people is people like some, don't like the others. You're yeah. always talking about function. That's who that is. You guys are. <laughs> <Right. laughs> well, how they look well, matters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, aesthetics. And so I wonder if that would be something that you could think about yeah. as an idea, put a survey out there and see which ones the community mm -hmm. likes best, assuming they all work okay. fine. Yeah. And it's I mean, case. I'm always happy. I mean, I, I can't imagine that some of your guys' thoughts might be different from some of our thoughts. I mean, we too also have opinions about ones that we think are nicer than others, but, <laughs> but you know, always. Yeah. I mean, but you should be weighing in on the survey too. Yeah, just, right? you work here. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes, yeah that's a nice so idea. That would be a nice engagement yeah. issue. Yeah. One more question. Yeah, I'm going to go to you. I like you don't like the paper. You don't like the paper. No, I want to ask about the paper. I'm going to give you a thing because then I want to say one thing and then I'm going to pass it to you, Betty. You said that we'll decide like where to put them. My answer is, or my question to you is, put them once we redo everything. Not, not today. Sure. But put them every place. Because aren't they useful every place? Like once, once. This is really exciting. The whole project. Yeah, it is. It is exciting. And so. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you know permeable labor should be everywhere. But but just keep in mind that you know um, it it. it, it we want to be mindful of the flood side too, because it, you know, we don't want these things to lift and, and, you know, leave battery park city. And so we're taking all of this, you know, um, you know, into account, but of course the ultimate goal is to increase the permeability, but not, not to a maintenance or, you know, pathway detriment, but all of that is being considered. The goal is to make it all permeable, but I think we're going to, maybe fall a little short of that for a variety of reasons. <laughs> no, that, that makes sense. I didn't even think about that. Go ahead. Um, yeah. No, I was going to comment about if, if you go to the community to get opinions about the shapes different, you would also give some input as to 
effectiveness in different locations. I, I don't want to tie the hands of the authority. Hmm. Maybe I, I would personally yeah. like multiple different shapes and angles. But mm -hmm. the configurations may work better in certain spaces than they do in other spaces. And variety is good. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. Betty. That's interesting. Thank because you. That should be part of the having those options. But yeah, function first, obviously. And then you raise the point that it's not functional every place. Right, right. So educate us too, because I don't think. <laughs> and then with your with the reporting out slide, just really simple. Well, actually, two minutes. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on there. We'd love it to be finished before May 31st. Yep. And like everything. So it's good for the summer and it's open. That's so, you know. Uh, a lot of the stuff has been yeah. not fixed for a long time. We are we are pushing, and I will uh, as we get these things up, we'll we can push them out. Good. And then I just have one person. Even the thing with the bridge, like for instance, yeah. that's a really great idea. So already I'm thinking, and I'll say, Ryan, oh my God, please, when your <laughs> staff is on the West Thames Bridge, sanding it down, repainting, send me a picture of that, and that yeah. becomes then something we push out so people yeah. are like, hey, this is literally being fixed. Being fixed now. Blog post goes in the parks happenings. And that's how we get the word out, and also. Remind folks that if there are additional things that come up, they can tell us. So, yes, I can't promise it's still going to be May thirty first, but I know that Ryan is working uh, on it. Ryan, just good to know that you're paying attention and you're trying to get yeah. it done. That's yeah, we're very jealously guard the uh, the reputation <laughs> and the beauty of Battery Park City. We take it very seriously. And last but not least, ending on dog waste. Go ahead. Um, I am one of the people who, unfortunately, unless my dog decides to poop right by the bin, I'm not using the the, the newspaper that's in there, the, the, the paper that you put, because I don't have anything to pick it up with. Right. So what about if you don't want to put more um, containers at every block, maybe at every corner you put more paper, newspaper, because I don't mind if I'm, and I look, my, my thing is, I see where they poop, I look and it's like, okay, how far am I going to have to go to come back? <laughs> and there's somebody going to step in it in the meantime. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not a perfect system. Know. Yeah. No, it's, no, it's not. I, I throw in plastic. Oh, that's not yeah. a good idea. I don't know. We can find maybe. See, what it, see if it's an idea. So go ahead, Maria. Um, Justine, maybe buildings could be encouraged to make newspaper available because if people don't get newspaper subscriptions anymore, you don't have paper in your house, but they're collecting some amount of it. Oh, that might, I mean, that's something. So that maybe we could it. have a place. I know in our building, but maybe all buildings could be asked to have a that place for dog owners to use, but it would be part of a bigger communication yeah. about what to do with it once you have when it. When you walk out the door, here, you know, here's, where, where here's, here's there. Here, the dog, here's, here's right. the two sheets of paper. Right. I'm sorry, I thought those bags were, or at least some of them were compostable. Some of them are, but not all. Some of them are compostable. You know, it's still, it's, it's still, um, you need a real big facility to break those things down and that's not necessarily what we have. We obviously get really high temperatures, but those are meant for massive, large, large things. And so um, our, our program can't necessarily break even the compostable ones, which of course are a better option if you're gonna go that route overall anyway. <laughs> I don't have a dog, but are they signs on each of the compost station, the dog waste? Do they explain that? They do, yes. No, no, even if it says recyclable, don't use it. Um, yeah, it says, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to check like the fine print right now. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll definitely check, but I do feel like we're pretty explicit about no no I think we say like no plastic bags, even the compostable ones, you know, because okay. it doesn't, you know, kind of thing. But I'll I'll double check, but that's I it. see people do that all the time. So it's compostable. Yeah. Okay. So do I. <laughs> Thank question you. About, question about our household compostables, fruits and veggies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. What do you do when people throw all that stuff in the bin in a plastic bag? How do you handle that? I mean, we bring it back to 75 and we dump it out of that plastic bag. And then we yeah. throw that plastic bag out. That's that's what right. we do. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. What do you prefer? Just people taking it in a plastic cup and dumping it? it. Yeah, honestly, yeah. It, it it doesn't have to be. It could just be like a bin full of food in whatever state you're giving it, whether it's frozen, rotten, whatever, and because it all just ends up getting processed and touched in some fashion. So 
you know, I, I, I appreciate that you getting it from point A to point B. It's easier when it's in a plastic bag and then you just leave the whole thing and you don't have a thing. So, you know, we do it, but we just, we take it out of the plastic bag and we throw the plastic bag away. Can we say though, I bring it in plastic bags all the time. Cause that's how I store it. My yeah, me too. But I just empty them. Just dump it. Well, you dump it and then you throw the plastic bag. Yeah. Throw the bag away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 For some people. Yeah. But that's, that's a great idea. That's a bad idea in their heads. heads. You have dump in it. I mean, that's I mean, what I mean. Same, same process, either on the front end or the back end. Yeah. Right. But right. it's good to know that it's not being discarded, but the poop is being yeah. discarded. I'm sorry, it would have to be. No, right. no, that's, that's sure. okay. That's why, you know, that's why we're here. That's why we're getting the word out. I mean, this is a new yeah. process for the world, let right. alone us. So. Put a sign, empty your plastic bag. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Empty your little garbage bag. Right. 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 Yeah. right. Um, okay, thank you so much, Ryan. Thank My you. Pleasure. This is great. Um, yeah. I think we're good. I see no other questions, no hands raised. So, what I'm going to do is let Betty go. Yes, no please, please, poor Betty. Let let go now. So you got... Ryan, thank you. Oh, no, you don't because you got Nick or Iordano here. To... It's fine. I'm not leaving anyway. You're not leaving. You want to go Patrick first? No, no, no. No, no. no it's not leaving. How can they speak? Let's 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 yeah. yeah, he wants the We're here for the duration, Betty, please. We need to learn about parking. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever we don't already know, which is probably. Well, maybe the ambassadors can help. So, Betty, thank you for doing this. So, Betty Kay has put together um, a uh, traffic and parking issues presentation um related to the North Battery Park City neighborhood and um really excited to see your ideas the problems identified and potential solutions identified so thank you for well, hard work to build on to the uh, daylighting resolution that was passed a month ago in both CD1 the Battery Park City has a no north has an additional problem we're going to go on and I try to get some solutions too which is great. Thank you. Yeah, the double parking, which anybody in the north is certainly seeing this. Double parked cars are common in the daytime on all of the streets. The problem does occur, and triple parking is not unusual. And it does occur at night, but it's not as routine as it is during the day, during the, especially during the week. Uh, the force it forces the pedestrians and passengers to walk between the vehicles to get to and from the curb. So that's you see, because some of them are for hire vehicles and they can take off at any time. Mm -hmm. and you're just walking between them and they're coming and going. It's it's really crazy. It also makes it difficult and possible for pedestrians, drivers of vehicles, and cyclists to see each other <laughs> or to be seen by the others. So you have the, you'll see some pictures of the pedestrians going out, kind of looking around things in the traffic lane, trying to figure out, and being shocked when a bicycle or something comes by because they didn't anticipate it. Mm -hmm. They couldn't see it. Wheelchair users like myself, small children and pets, we're all over the ground and we have the biggest problem because we can't see over even the smallest of vehicles with windshields that aren't tinted. Mm -hmm. And the biggest defenders in the north happen to be the four higher vehicles. They're not the only ones, but they are the biggest part. Yes, they're always waiting for customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here it is on North End Avenue and I know their lights are on, but that's because they want their heaters on. They're really parked, they're not really. Mm -hmm. It looks like a moving, could be a moving lane. It's not. They sit like that all the time. Okay? It should be a moving lane, right? It's supposed to be, yes. Mm -hmm. This is looking across the street. And this is like I said, I'm in front of the library. And you can see now here the trucks are double parked. And I love those white box trucks because they're everywhere and that we've parked. And everybody wonders what's in those trucks? And they're forever. <laughs> well, they're not parked at all. And the drivers leave them. So we have a number of people who are worried about them being. Holding bombs or something. Yeah. Like this. There's no idea what's in them. But nevertheless, and you can still see the double park here. And here we go around to DC Street. It doesn't get any better if you go over there. In fact, that white van is the first moving lane. Everybody else there is just so oh. I look like this all the time. And then if you go over to River Chair, it's around the corner, this, this side of my building by Irish Hunger Manual. Here they are also just sitting there all the time, just waiting double park. Mm -hmm. With 
and yes, they do go over the crosswalk too. These are all these and happen to be all TLC vehicles. And here the school bus is in a moving lane. It's just pulled out of Murray Street around the Triangle Park. It's going to move, and you'll see what happens to the children when they try to get off the bus. I think it's yeah. in the next picture. Yeah. And so they have to scurry between these vehicles, two rows of vehicles, at least, sometimes three. Which means if when you see three, that means the bus or whatever is, is in the opposite lanes of traffic. And that happens with the uh, select buses when they come later in the evening. That's very common. But you can see the parents that you frighten the stand out there. So they stand on the sidewalk and wait for the kids to run the gauntlet between mm. the big windows on occasion. It's really terrible. Uh, and here we go. If you look uh, up North End Avenue, you can see this starts with a white box truck. Again, sometimes they start with the Brookfield back up to their parking. In this case, it's only one truck that's <coughs> triggering it here. The rest are all four hire vehicles. But it goes on and on. The problem starts to be you have two lanes of vehicles that aren't moving. That white vehicle is moving. It's in the most eastbound lane, most east lane of the northbound traffic, southbound traffic. What happens is the vehicles coming off of River Terrace get so nervous because they can't, anybody in the moving traffic can't see them and they can't see if the traffic's moving. So they come across and then they're backed up by other vehicles who cross the crosswalk. Because everybody wants to be able to see when the traffic's moving so they can get out of River Terrace and turn onto North End Avenue. And this goes on and on. And we have contacted um, the local police and they are aware of it. And their response is when we have time, they'll stop by. They stop by twice in, in about two months. It, it isn't fancy. We tried to look for something that's more effective and came across filing TLC complaints because they are able enforce the law and they're more willing to than the police are. Mm -hmm. Go to the next one. This was in fact, I, I get emails and contacts with please do something about these vehicles because they're all over and nobody can get access to our buildings and it's just plain dangerous. So I tell here I am. Next one. If you look at for those who like to go on, this is on X, or I'm still going to call it Twitter. Yeah, yes, yes, you. But this is sorry if you go back at reported underline NYC. They will take report using Twitter as long as you use at reported with it. Then give the oh. give it a picture of the vehicle so they can see the license plates, the location, and the time. You can do a report that way. This was interesting. This was a summary of 2023. So you can get an idea of what this group does. These were the stats for all the taxis, Ubers, Lyfts, all of the black cars. They can enforce for any of those. It's and you can do it on Twitter. Yes. So if you do it on the TLC, this, this at, at reported report, underscore in New York City. Right. They will report it to the TLC and 311. So you don't have to follow through and do that. You'll get the data store if it's needed. They do all of that, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. and their comment is unlike, unlike the NYPD, the TLC is staffed by attorneys who will digitally, diligently review every single uh, inbound 311 complaint and has the power to issue summonses. So they, they will oversee the whole process. Well, the TLC has the power to do it and report and make sure it gets to them. Next, it gets the data 311. And this is an idea of just how much they handled in 2023. And yes, it is in the thousands. Wow. Also, if you look at the X axis, you can see the various levels of the process. So everything from it being completely resolved uh, and the fines being paid to those who are waiting for responses, mm -hmm. those that are waiting for judgments to go out, uh, to the filings that just haven't been dealt with yet. The T this at reported will handle every single step along the way, which is wonderful. And it's very transparent. So. Okay. Uh, next. Oh, there's more than that. You look at their takeaway. This is that at New York City Taxi, which is the TLC, is extremely effective and professional agency compared to going to 311 and having the NYPD to handle it. And they do a lot of hold the drivers accountable for their dangerous behaviors. Having a sense because I might not double parking, but in fact, this, the scope of what you can report is much bigger than that to the TLC. Through at reporting. Go to the next. 
you'll get the they were they refer to Rich Mintz, Mintz, who I happen to know. He's on CB5. Oh, and in fact, he's in the public bathroom working group, which is how I got to know yeah. him. <laughs> but anyway, if you look at all the complaints that he made, <laughs> and you look at the various reasons, because keep in mind, we have to break down wow. all the categories of reporting that there are. So, for instance, those that were sitting on the crosswalk could have been reported separately from those that are double parked or illegally parked. Uh, versus those that ran a red stop, or you can document almost anything and they get processed and ticketed. Wow. Do app reporting. Is this only for double parking and all that? Calls? It's all of those categories. Illegal, <laughs> but not just, but like it could be it's a TLC. personal vehicle that's it has parked. It's TLC vehicle. Okay, gotcha. Right. It has to be a taxi reporting. or an Uber okay. or a Lyft or gotcha. a black car. So you'll see that on the plate, it has the T and then the number. Yeah, no, I know. You're not a quarter of the yellow cap. Right, right. Yeah. Do one of those. But anyway, these are all the categories that there are, so you'll get to know. And you go, to, which Mintz then goes on, and you'll see this is the actual Twitter number account that I took it from. You go back to the posting. He gives a, another Twitter tweet for each of these things and shows what the boarding looks like and the picture looks like to explain to you what each of these things are. Oh, wow. What does the crosswalk stop line offense look like and what does the report look like is in one of the tweets. It's just a whole long chain of tweets. You go to this particular site and you can learn a lot. Illegal tents, uh, illegal plates. I mean, you can do it, lots of things. So if you have the United States Postal Service, they don't have license plates. One, they can't be reported to TLC. But even if you want to go to 611, you can't do anything about them because they don't have a license plate. So you just have to live with them. And we have to find a way of blocking them so they don't do that. Which leads into problem number two, the lack of sight lines or visibility amongst the road users outside of the double parking by TLC. Yes. And so for these, if you remember, we did the resolution of yeah. January with yeah. the day lighting. And that red lit area, that red area is not lit, and that's where the pedestrians cannot see the driver or the cyclists that are in the same location, and vice versa. That's kind of a no sight zone. And keeping in mind here where the red bars are is where they have cleared out a vehicle. This only meets the New York state law, which is there has to be a 20 foot setback from the crosswalks. New York City exempted itself from state law. So you probably passed on your driver's license that you have to be 20 feet back from the crosswalk because that's a state license. But New York City actually let you do the other. And so there's been a big push to try to get the city get close off of that. Yeah, because I was going to say that's what. If you go to the next one, you'll get it more. Uh, it's, so you don't think New York City is absolutely horrible and on their own. California is only trying right now to pass it for the whole state have day lighting. Hmm. So they're not even as forward thinking as New York State is. Next. This is a picture that really shows very effectively what it does. You look to the left, here they have a bump out curb, but it's a painted, it's a kind of a short term, inexpensive paint out that goes out. It also has the uh, heavy duty things. Here they're planters, they could be a piece of cement, a granite block, they could be a bollard. Anything that'll stop cars from driving in. At the far end, you'll see another planter. That's so the vehicle's turning into the block, which this is one way, but never mind. They turn on, don't slide swipe the pedestrians are just trying to cross the street because they may not see them. On the right side of the street that is blocked by the vehicle, there is a pedestrian standing in exactly the same space as the one on the left side of the street. You can't see them. You can't see them because the vehicle, and that is a low vehicle with windows. Mm -hmm. You still can't see them. But the black car on the right near the corner. Yes, is, is that parked legally? Yes. Yes. It yes. is legal I, I, to be that close. In New York I don't think City, it was in the city, if it were right. in another in part of the state, state yeah. you'd right. have to be 20, 20 feet from the crosswalk. Crazy. Right. From the from stop, stop, line. Right. The the stop left, line. On the stop line. Well, stop line, but actually it's a crosswalk. But on the left, what you see is they had to paint it out. They went back to 20 feet. So they took care of the yeah, building yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. they kind of yeah. need to do that for people to let them know. Well, just so people know what it is when we talk about it. There mm -hmm. is such a thing as a temporary, and this is what it looks like. We had, we did in the CB1 resolution ask 
there's something heavy be put at the edge so that people can't drive in because they'll just they'll drive right, right in over with the those cones. But yeah, this seems yeah. like a pretty decent. Uh, right. So this is what's been done in a useful local. way. Yep. Never Let's see how effective it is with right to left. Mm -hmm. Back to my white box car. Chunks. They're me. all over. <laughs> This is a particular situation where that's kind of being back to 20 feet would help because that first truck would be, wouldn't be there. It would wrap farther. Mm -hmm. The vehicles coming up one way, going westbound, uh, they have no idea. They can't see that pedestrian that's coming in. Yeah, this is crazy. This is crossing in. And if you look, this is where there's that pathway that's mid block that goes all the way from Rockefeller Park up to the ball fields, cuts across. So this is a different situation, and I have a solution for a very specific problem. Here, the same this postal vehicle truck is always here somewhere. This time, it's marked against the curb, an overlapping part of the crosswalk. So they would still be illegal, but you can't do anything because they don't have a license plate. Nevertheless, look at the lack of visibility there is. You see it all the time on the terrace. People with their strollers and kids going to the park and. Yeah, you know that nobody that's driving on that street, or even the cyclists, can see what's going on with the pedestrians. Mm -hmm. Next. But they're supposed to. <laughs> well, they're supposed to, but if there was daylighting of some sort, they would. Be forced to. Uh, and for somebody who is down and low, like I am sitting, and if you have children who are first or third grade, tend to be around my height or, or shorter. And of course, pets are even shorter than that. They're completely not seen, so don't let them get way in front of you, adult who is standing, because they're not as visible as you are. But there's all kinds of craziness going on. Like, who would have expected a three point turn going on? Yeah, right. Except no, it, especially know. getting out on the street so that I can kind of look around the vehicle. And that's what starts this whole cycle of now I'm in the way and the vehicles start backing up and it goes on. Next. There is a program, this is from the DOT website, where they do have a mid-block narrowing. And so what they will do, in this case, it's, it's a little quasi-built out. They've changed the color of the paint out. Mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. uh, but they, you can do something mid-block. This could potentially solve that route between Rockefeller Park all the way up to uh, the ball fields. To ask the DOT to do something to paint out a little area around it. Because you do have to have the tactile area for the low vision people has to be there so they know they're going to be entering or getting out of a zone with vehicles moving. And in fact, that legislation has changed, and that piece of tactile has to be as wide as the uh, ramping down walk is, and that's supposed to be the whole way to the crosswalk. So that whole thing is also changing. Next, and that's recent uh, federal work. Again, all this is not particularly legal, but lots of people park by the corners around North Center Park City. Here, this is a favorite spot for motorcycles. If you look on the other side of the street, they think they can wrap around the corner for some reason, so they always overlap and park mm -hmm. beyond. Mm -hmm. The corner mm -hmm. is very right corner. It's, it's unbelievable. But that also makes it difficult to see. So next. Which is why we really need to build out going to the corner and then back to the street. Because here it is, you know, on Murray Street, you know, parking. So it really needs to be the build out, which is really a paint out in this case, has to extend to the corner to take care of this. Because I feel like I'm going through a tunnel when I go down. And sometimes what they do is, they, because there's no crosswalk, they have no guidance of where to stop. They actually overlap, and sometimes there's only a foot. Mm -hmm. They leave. I can't even get down. So I have to go down to the other corner and then drive down the street. And my scooter, it's really crazy. And then you're in traffic once you're in. Well, right. But, you know, it's that's the problem. <laughs> and here we go to the other end of Murray Street over by River Terrace. By River Terrace. And again, the problem is, what do you do with C intersections? Because there really isn't. It's a different configuration than if there was a corner. So what do you do? And again, the cars overlap. But Crosswalk. They're not supposed to, but what's to stop them from doing it? So next. Again, and another vision again of this is me down at the bottom. It happens to be that same uh, ramp. But it, I can't see over these vehicles, and there are a lot of them. So be mindful of that. And that's why they need at these T intersections to find some kind of solution for them. Next. We need the vehicle set back a little for some vision. 
And then there are these problems. These are another example of the kind of blocks that could be used since they're about in Park City anyway, mm -hmm. instead of planters, instead of ground, you know, granite blocks. There are lots of choices. But yes, they did finally move it away from the curb cut. So you can't do that. But you know, it's hard. What they thought about the curb cut is like, oh, can go here. Yeah, they said, oh, yeah. that's part. <laughs> I think they're yeah. stuck. Yeah. Which is where it's, you know, I mean, these are all totally clapping parking, right? Or they buy the TLC. Not a TLC, yeah, there you go. But because of the uh, parking enforcement won't come down here, really everybody knows, because even my doorman knows you can park here and no one's going to bother you. Anyway, next. So I found TLT has another program, which is mm -hmm. called the Curb Extension, which allows you to pick a very limited area. So potentially these curb cuts that are on a T intersection can ask to have just an area with a little bit of a setback on either side of that ramp to be set back in the parking lane. Sure. It is much more flexible than I thought. And this could accommodate a place such as those T intersections along the park side, which is going to also happen on South End Avenue when you have Wagner Park in that area. So the neck downs to achieve daylighting. There is the most permanent, which goes the next. And then they're called curb build outs or the neck down. Here's one where the curb is actually built out versus the paint that was talking about. Mm -hmm. And then they talk about all the great things you can put on this area, which is nice. But you notice they put that recycling bin right in front of Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do this all the time. They empty it, they drop it down. So then you have, yeah, they have to still watch out that they make sense of what they do, but never mm -hmm. This is what it does. And next one is from the National Association of City Transit uh, Officials. And so the NIC DOT is a member of this organization. But just to give you a schematic of what it looks like in theory. So you can add biosoils, you can add uh, rain gardens and things to them. Short points. And you also have the short, notice the distance that the pedestrians have to cross with vehicles out there, mm -hmm. how shortened it is. Yeah, the build out. Right. That's true of the paint as well, but it's a little more protected here. <laughs> Next. And this is an idea of what it looks like in some of the places where it's been done in New York City. Mm -hmm. You build some greenery in and some drainage in areas that really need it. Every park city is pretty blessed. You yes. have to yes. be sure, though, that the plants don't get too tall. Because on the left side, that's getting a little tall already for kids. and. Uh, actually, for me, that wouldn't be, but no, you're right. Battery Park City to take care of that. I know. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that's why sort of the plants right. important. Right. 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 It's not just how they look, but mm -hmm. how they look. Right. And notice even the tree doesn't have low foliage. Right. So right. That's a street tree to the party. And this is an example that meets with some of the new regulations that have passed. So you notice the wider uh, pedestrian ramps mm -hmm. that can be done. They're yeah. not as essential in a lot of areas of Battery Park City. But more and more, the DOT is going to be doing it because the law has changed in 2023 uh, about what's going to have to be done. So some places, like such as crossing West Street, I expect they're going to do this because these large flow of pedestrians trying to funnel down to this narrow area yeah. and all the strollers and bikes and everyone's kind of vying to get to the curb cut. But this is actually a raised crosswalk, which is another option for safety and for slowing. This can oh, so like a ball. Ball. Yeah. Yes. yes. It's maybe more suitable for places like South End Avenue or North End Avenue. We can have some people really kind of tearing kind of quickly down the road. South End Avenue is bigger because it doesn't have a median in it. Mm. Yep. But anyway, next. So priorities came up because this was part of the resolution. You may not be so aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. That, this, is, this is just stuff as the website has looked at them more scientifically. Next. And you'll notice North End Avenue is only one of nine spots. In the south, actually, there's Albany and uh, South End Avenue, yeah. and there's also. Oh, well, it's actually got, excellent. So I have an intersection almost. Battery in Place, the second place, is the yeah. other one. Yeah. But if you go to the next, you'll have what, what Matt published in the broadsheet with mm -hmm. where accidents occurred. This is only in 2023. It's not that the South is completely immune to having some dangerous intersections. No. No. So I do want to point that out to the South, although I just want the people in the South not hold back the North because we no, no, we could do, we should break it out. I agree. Next. Next. And the resolution, I want to point out the sec the last bullet, second to the last bullet there. 
What about the blocks that had priorities to be with schools, senior centers, assisted living facilities, facilities for people with disabilities, hospitals, parks, and libraries? You go to the next, I analyzed North Battery Park City. Oh, so the reason for the seniors is simply because if you look at 20 miles per hour, which is slow, they are three more times likely to die than being hit at these intersections at that slow speed than an able bodied person, a younger person is. So seniors are a priority of the DOT to try to slow down, and we have a population in our district. Mm -hmm. Next. But if you look at North Battery Park City, it starts in high school on one side of Chambers, if you cross Chambers Street at Brookdale for the seniors, mm -hmm. and you have 289, you have the middle school and yep, I mean, elementary. elementary school there. You go to the next block, now you've got the mid block. Crosswalk take the people going from park to uh, yeah, because one park to another. But you also have asphalt green along that route as well. If you go to the next block, now sorry, next block, back. Not the next block. Not yeah, the next slide. Yeah, so that's okay. So that's like people inside of Murray Street. There you have the public library. Mm -hmm. So and it's almost every block is based. Definitely. It's very and it's a definitely a pedestrian yes. space. Because even if you cross over from the ball fields, people will go to Goldman Alley, mm -hmm. go to Shake Shack and some mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. There's a lot of cross traffic there as well as students. Yeah. If you go there after school, you have all kinds of people from high school yeah. as well as the middle school. Mm -hmm. Next. So I don't want to dismiss them. So my question really is, so what do we do with Battery Park City? They were left off the resolution specifically because I was going to come here and our problems are a bit different, such as all the double parking and all the placard parking in the north. And, and also, who is responsible? Is this all DOT or is this some, some of the Battery Park City Authority streets? Well, technically, the streets belong to New York City. Yeah, that's weird. And yeah. By that, I mean, technically, they still do financial responsibilities. The DOT will tell you they're not going to deal without the Battery Park City Authority agreeing to what's done. And I'm sure they also hit you up for some money from time to time. So. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's weird because Battery Park City, the north was developed well after the south was in, and all that's why a lot of the buildings in the north are newer. Technically, and again, it's really just, it's probably a distinction at this point, but I did. It's technically the, some of the streets in the North Battery Park North City North. haven't been deeded back to the city yet, so we quote unquote own them. Mm -hmm. But it's not like we're going to do anything in the street. DOT still maintains Does the streets. Okay. They paved the streets. They put okay. the crosswalks down. Even if it's something that like we wanted to do, because let's see, we were able to do something more quickly than DOT, mm -hmm. we would still want to make sure we're running through DOT to make sure that they're okay. So for all intents and purposes, City streets or city streets okay. are DOT, um, but nonetheless, we want to make sure that we were working with and along through the process with DOT to understand what their plans were, and you know, obviously, we can we can uh, be be part of that that control as we go through. Well, I think it's sort of has to be because the authority right. is is not for something. That right. they can it's help not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also, I'm not so sure the DOT will ask or isn't urged on a bit. Mm. By the involvement of the authority, because they have all these places around the city. Be worried about yeah. yeah so, and there are sometimes so. certain things that if if there is the ability perhaps to engage in a capital project or do something that DGP may be you know they're trying to serve all five boroughs, they may have different uh, areas where that are and perhaps more acute need. Mm -hmm. if, if the authority has the ability to maybe fund a project, that would be something that. Uh, we can explore doing with the ascent of DOT because we had the funding readily available. Right, exactly. Which is why I talked about doing even the, the least expensive, which is putting down a, some kind of blockade of some yeah. sort, along with the painted. It doesn't have to be the whole capital project, which is a five to eight year cycle anyway to right. do, even if you're funded. There are almost 50,000 intersections in New York City. So even the de declaration of we're going to change a thousand. A year for safety yeah, and do a thousand years. for uh, for daylighting. Yeah, you're talking about 50 years to get through them all. So don't think they're going to rush to your corner and change yeah. everything, get rid of all the parking because we're talking about so a long is, line of things to be done. This is very interesting. All right, so what should we do? What do you come up with in order? Well, and that's well, I gave some suggestions, Suggested. but I think some of it is do we develop a few people who want to work on it together? Are the people from the south interested in? Having the South looked at more closely to see what could be done, especially as resiliency projects wind down. Mm -hmm. You know, what should we be looking at? 
my sense is the south is a lesser priority than the north yeah. just because the kind of the uh, geography of the south is very much different you've got wider streets to begin with yeah. uh, in the south but you want you may want more net downs to shorten the distance you, you, you may but also less, street less parking is much more of a residential issue in the south in the north it's all taken over by hybrid parking and, uh, yes. yeah. and residents have a hard time parking but in the south yeah. every parking space is kind of at a premium to the residents that's just my I'm going to call no, Jimmy first, then Eric. Yeah, I mean, maybe I would help. Okay, so, yes, yeah. I live around the area. You know, this is a city where somebody almost ran over my child. And I'll oh. play the audio vision, a version of it, because, yeah, yeah, just like it, the guy crying out at me. I mean, I was going to attack me. So, I mean, I have never lived in a more uncivilized place. No, no, no. Oh. oh, wow. Yes, again, you know, Jeff is right. They don't worry. The people in the north don't worry about parking because there is no free parking. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. That's not a conversation we have because nobody can. Nobody ever could. So they all know they have to have paid parking or get rid of the car. That makes sense. No, that makes sense, which yeah. is also a really important reason why we broke this up because yeah. the north needs attention now. Mercedes, like sports suspensions, zooming down toward Saxon and do the California roll. Right? They never stop by South Side. Oh. Well, then there. So, yeah. 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 Eric? I, uh, oh, wait. Before, Eric first, then you pass. I see you. I, I just think that if we're going to do North, we should also do South just to compare and contrast that we have a full picture. Yeah. Because sure, we're focusing on North and there are issues at North, but can there or will there be? And if not, at least we know. Yeah, no, that makes sense, and I have a comment, but go ahead, Pat. Yeah, I agree, I agree, and I think you agree with focusing down, especially going from the schools, the parks, and... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Gate the Plaza, that Liberty Street. Right, which should be the highest priority. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the, yeah, the day source. Because there's more schools out here. Yeah. 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 My yeah. son got hit outside of Gateway Garage. Great job. Somebody was leaving. Great job. The point that I wanted to bring up is dealing with the South. Yeah. By PS 276. Yes. Okay. Uh, even the buses, the regular city bus flows the south side down. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that, that crosswalk, I mean, you still put somebody there. Mm hmm. Thank you. Because of it. So uh, if you're looking at that kind of crosswalks down there, that should definitely. I think that was highlighted on the map too. Yeah. That's the case. Yeah. Uh, I think it would help if there was actually a build out of the curve, which would narrow the street bed. I mean, that's a visual cue that this road's been narrowed a bit. Well, there's several issues with that first one. Number one is a key driveway for the Jewish Heritage Museum. There's also some sort of a huge metal plate on the middle of the crosswalk. Don't know what it's for. I'm sure it's for it's some service. Yeah, yeah, right. That's yeah, it's not a small, huge yeah. plate. You know, and uh, the other thing, you know, I, I like raised crosswalks because I've seen it out east and that stuff uh, where Rose and Home Depot does it. It's quite effective because people have to put on their brakes. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, you know, uh, every once in a while I see flex buses down here. And if you have a flex bus, it's that's where the issue comes with uh, speed bumps and that. That it doesn't work with uh, New York City buses. Now, it would work with a normal New York City bus, yeah. but if you have a flex bus, that's where the issue would be for top bus. Hmm. I think the DOT has a different, I think they have a solution. Okay. We think well, that's buses like an issue. We can see buses, right? Yeah, yeah. I did at least. Yeah. Well, well, it's, it's, like not when you're, when the bit, when the short, when something's short, sure. when you can't see these sports cars, I mean, you know, you can't even see them. That's really not so, the issue so, at this spot. Yeah, this spot. but we'll continue to follow the bus run. Mm -hmm. the bus run. Yeah. Not, I, I'm just saying that's not the issue at this spot. Yeah. At this spot is nobody stops to the stop sign. Well, the word stop is painted in the middle of the street. Have we encountered a traffic light at that intersection? 
I think is there a blinking light there? Is that like one of the No, probably stop sign. It is not. It's just a, it's just a stop sign. Okay. 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 And that was looked at by the DOT. So and they was already analyzed. And they won't come back and do it again. They just did it. Less oh, less than a year. You know, it's a tough spot because of where the crosswalk is, and it's tough. And it's a tough spot also now. You know, you got the construction and everything else right. going on there. Makes it even but, more uh, fun. Right. So, you know, that's why it's more important that my, my people are there during the uh, start of school and at release time. But like I said, my people are there just holding back the kids not to run into the crosswalk it's when they're easy. coming down. Yeah. All right. Not to say that everybody, that everybody doesn't stop, but the vast majority of them. Do not. Okay. I actually witnessed a bus blowing through that stop sign yeah, last yeah, week. Right. I mean, uh, they don't see the necessity in stopping, and I don't know whether they don't realize it's school or what it is, but they just don't. They, they roll right on. Well, school was, wasn't in session. Right. All right. Okay. Is there any role for the ambassadors to play in reporting, such as to report it at reporting? Underline New York City, Sunday at double. Could you call? To say, I mean, could they call 311 or whoever you're calling? I mean, other people, anyone who helps, yeah, reporting one or two here or there, we can help. And go ahead, Pat. Go for it. We, I, I guess we could turn around and do that. We have it in the, in the past. I mean, we turn around and put out the, uh, the sign that we keep in the school. You know, like one of those signs, you know, slow kids crossing. Yeah, yeah. Kind of the thing. Yeah, they put it on the flag. I put it out there. Okay. I actually had somebody come driving by and steal a lot of them. went through it. He grabbed it and kept going. He so said, yes. Oh, my God. People are so, so wonderful. I wish I'd looked at my camera. Right, Zach has something but to say. You get a good point, Betty. To the extent that those are handles and kind of Twitter accounts and things that we can share, we can amplify that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. just sometimes it helps build a Right. Kind of a critical mass, yeah. So that the enforcement uh, powers that be can know that they can dedicate the resources there. It's not like they, Mary, they don't that? want to. It's just a matter of there's there's a lot going on. They want to make sure that we are getting resources where they're needed. I've it also had like first reason they have given out summonses. I mean, they they've given out uh, summonses for long and stuff. So That's know. great. I've it's seen Wednesday. it sometimes. It's every, it's every Wednesday in South. Wednesday, Wednesday in South. It's just. Which is one day. You're going to have to start mixing it up. Yeah, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Zach. I just wanted to clarify the location. Is this the first number place? Yell at. And better place? Yell at. Mm -hmm. Second place. Second, second place. Second place. Second place. Yeah. Second place. And better place. And yeah, that's where the south. Place. Southbound traffic, northbound, or south. It's both. both. It's two two no, no, the, the, the blowing the light is it both? No, it's stop, stop sign and it's and both blowing the stop sign. Are they blowing it going north or and south? Yeah, or that's, that's, that's like one or the other. Both. No, no. both, yes, it's both. I'm sorry, go ahead, Marianne. Did you see that? I, I think I covered my uh, <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Nick. Yes. Any of these things, if you could give them to building management to share yeah. one of the buildings, yeah, because there may be you know 20 people in a building who pick up on it, <laughs> go out there and do it suddenly. Okay, also yeah, with they're the they're compost, then yeah. the new compost rules, dog rules, buildings should give them out. So, no, I think so. Let's get back to this traffic study. Yes. I think it's a great idea. I don't know if it's a working group or a task force. But can we set it up, please, for this issue? Because there's for the asking yeah. what do we do for the um, working group or task force? And I can't recall. Oh, oh, no. Years ahead. no, we just did it, man. Yeah, there are you changed the pavilion. The pavilion. It's yeah, the pavilion. What do you, I don't know what that's called. I don't know what the name. Is. Whatever we're allowed to make it be called, that's what we'll do. Have to change the oh, okay. Yeah. So, Consider doing the same thing. Okay. So based on that, let's do it. So Jimmy wants to work with you. Yeah. Betty, I assume you want to. People from the South neighborhood who would like to get involved. Not you. I particularly. I know. That, no, I won't. We got to say. You're in the North. Um, I will raise my hand because somebody has to. But I do have enough to do. 
Um, but at least to have a voice and I will try to pay attention to see what's going on and try to see if I can. And if Justine can't be there, I can replace her sometimes. That would be great. Sarah. Be that that with me. I would love that. Because you do pay attention. You, you're always walking the streets. Yeah. I'm not. I don't like the I don't like the way you said that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're always outside. You're out. I should be. And I'm not, I'm not housebound. You're not housebound. <laughs> That's so much nicer. So much, so much nicer. It's Sorry. Fresh air. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so that would be great. And I think we should set it up. And as you said, we should get this done quickly. I mean, I think we should come up with some sort of a resolution and have some sort of a plan as quickly as we can. So let's let's push it. Is that okay, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Betty, I'm gonna get beat up again. Yeah, right. There you go. I'm putting you in ch in charge to, to get the keep the ball rolling and keep us all going. How's that? Okay. If anyone who has any ideas about priority areas, by all means, let me know. But I think but I think we're going to start to look at where the schools and we also have to give us. Everyone has to keep in mind where the resiliency projects are going on or are going to be going on. Effect on what you do. I think you can certainly do a short term paint and prepare for the project. But you can see why you're not looking for any kind of capital plan. Yeah, precisely why I think we want to certainly be involved with either way with what DOP does, but especially given mm -hmm. of the, the work that's going to have to come up. We want to make sure that well, we're going to be rebuilding the sidewalks. Yeah. yeah, because they are going to be rebuilding those sidewalks, and I'd like to get that stuff looked at when they do those rebuildings after the resiliency work. Right, right. Do those schools all have crossing guards? No, 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 yeah, we don't like no, 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 no. that's what <laughs> my ally has been stepping up and helping us, especially at 277. I'm going <coughs> now, the shortage of schools, yeah, it's a tough issue, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a longer yeah. issue, it's very tough, and as that issue, most because you only work in the morning and three o'clock, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't I mean, make any sense to live before. far away from the neighborhood to come to and come. do it. Yeah. But it's really difficult for them to get people in the neighborhood to step yeah. up. So, but Nick, I also have to say, because you know, yes, <laughs> and I, and Marianne knows, um, there was a South End Avenue project that was out there that was looked yeah. at yeah. that was uh, mostly a read upon, right? Oh. And that's yeah, not, Condition. Correct. You know, it, yeah. it, it's not it good anymore. 2018, yeah, 2018, before. So, no, so it, it's not, not good for today. Oh, but dear. is there anything planned for South End Avenue, or would this be the new thing? I would say that at the moment, uh, what we had envisioned back in 2018, and then COVID happened, and yeah. happening, we came back and we were going to then put something out and with what's going on with resiliency, you know, the priority is the resiliency project, yeah. the capital projects and other capital projects going on. Not that pedestrian calming and traffic management isn't important, um, but I would say that that project as it was envisioned is now not going to happen in that way. So, good. okay, good. Because yeah, we need it. South Avenue or in the North or with some combination of the day riding, we want to be part of the conversation, but no, nothing, nothing uh, planned for the South. Uh, South and Devon U.S. 10th Street traffic study as it existed in the past. We would need to kind of build on what was done and restart that. Right, uh, exactly. Because that was a, a concept, but it's not. Yeah. And conditions have changed to just point. Yeah, it years. totally has. Yeah, there's, there's no longer a taxi stand, but yeah. now there's delivery trucks that are far more voluminous. Than yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. No, and and we need to see what happens. We need the truck pricing that comes in. To see what happens to our yeah, neighborhood. That's right. It may very well affect it. Uh, yeah, sure. That's good One point. or the other that's is going to. The question of how does one become a crossing guard? Who's in charge of the police? The police. Yes. So that's that's why they, they, they take applications. Yeah. Yeah, there might even be, there used to be a, a, a flyer up there. there. Yeah, there was a pretty big campaign oh, to right. recruit. There was. So, yeah, definitely. Not. They and it's a big question. And, you know, for someone who lives here to do it, it is the morning, yeah, exactly. afternoon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You get I think you can just walk out there and do it. Well, right, yeah, you could. But White gloves, yeah. yellow vest. Yeah, the PTA might be interested. I don't know if they could. Yeah. I mean, I think I know that they've talked about it, but that's a good thing to look at and to see. But I don't think they can. I think it's a police. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it was it's issued for some reason. I remember oh, she was she was if it. they can't, it's not happening. Yeah, please. Uh, I, 
sort of a clarifying point. Uh, it's unclear to me whether this working group is intending to tackle the South End Avenue problem, so to speak, which is really a, a much different problem. And there's some similarities to it, but in the sense that it's traffic and pedestrians and whatnot. But the geography of South End Avenue and the conditions of South End the, the Avenue the are very, very different. From so that's a good question. Should we have first do the north and then the south? So Eric, we that's one reason, well, that's yeah. one reason why I'm referring because they're no. very different problems. Problems, and you're right. Parking I mean, is a huge issue. There's more to the working group if they want to tackle. No, so but it's two groups problems at the same time. Not, but, but, but they are really different. And I am happier having it be focused on the north. To start, I don't hear. I mean, I don't hear people complaining about or having south. issues yeah. in the south. Yeah. At this point in time, in fact, the biggest uh, complaint was with the South End Avenue project. Most beyond um, the block between the Liberty and Albany, everybody was saying, "Leave it alone." Uh, and and we didn't really have much at two seventy six at that point. But so this at that time, you know, in our neighborhood by our side by Liberty Court, on West Ham, we didn't want West Ham. We didn't want to charge, but we a whole different thing. But we do need more truck parking, designated yeah. truck parking. We do, but now they otherwise they need double control. Control. Yeah. yeah, I say it's a different it's problem. A diff it's it's very not yeah. easy to solve. It's a different yeah, problem. I mean, so so Nick Ayardana, do you have anything you'd like to add? You're welcome to unmute yourself and just say hello. I'm not sure that he's when he can unmute himself. I'm not sure that he's a he's a panelist, right? Yeah, yes, yeah, he's a panelist. Oh yeah, see. I mean, but that's fine. Um so Nick Guardano is the is the There he is. There you go. Hello. How are you, sir? Good, good. How's every everyone's night going? Everyone's doing well. Thank you so much for being here. I'm assuming you listen to everything. Is there anything you wanna throw in or add or say anything? So um in regards to the parking situation in uh you got on uh, North End Avenue, um you know, we do get the complaints. We do see it. However, it is difficult to enforce to keep the enforcement uh, there. Um, however, you know, since Captain Rosenthal joined the precinct, you know, we brought these complaints um, to him. We've been able to, um, I guess, some collaboration with traffic. And at some point, I want to say in late January, early February, there was kind of like a two week blitz of of mm -hmm. the area where I want to say like 23 to 25 vehicles were towed not not just summons but they were towed with tow trucks out to Brooklyn Navy Yard um in an effort to like maybe correct some behavior in that area however like I wish we could keep it there 20 all, all, all the time 24 7 but you know that's not possible uh so they did help us out with that and then there's been continued um our our summons unit, which was only at this point, you know, everyone's everyone's depleted resources. I mean, you go to any precinct, they'll tell you we don't have resources. However, um, our summons unit was only two officers. We are, I think Captain Rosenthal just added or is about to add a third officer to, uh, so, so total of three. Um, and don't forget, we have all of lower Manhattan. So, you know, one of the stops is gonna be Battery Park City. Um, even, even today, you know, we were driving around with, with doing other business. So uh, we do clear out the double park cars. You know, we're all instructed to, you know, what, if we're there and we see it, just clear it out. Um, however, they do leave, but then they just circle around and come back. Um, yeah. that, that has been an issue. I know captain Rosenthal, every time we're down there, like he does clear it out. We do write summonses there. Um. And what I've seen, and I've also seen an uptick in complaints of, of, of our enforcement of that area, being that they're complaining, you know, we're harassing them, we're this, we're that. So it's, you know, it, it is what it is. If you double park or triple park, you're going to get a summons. Um, one of the complaints <laughs> is uh, more geared towards the traffic department, like they're uh, booting cars, they're putting boots on the cars now. So you might see an increase of the, on these cars 
where I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's they put a lock on the wheel and you can't um, yeah. you gotta call the number. You can't drive home, right? So um, I also I got a complaint from the hotel that one of their guests' car got booted. I mean, he got you know he pulled yeah. over, parked, um, and they just booted the car. Typically, that practice is you know if you have if the if the plate owns like owes like three or four tickets, they'll boot it. Yeah. But now it's like they're just booting at, at will. Like if you doesn't it, that doesn't matter. So it is be, that whole area is being taken a little seriously with with, with that kind of stuff. So um, hopefully that does that does change the behavior of of the parking situation in that area. Um, as it relates to the placard parking, the ones that are legal, like have legal plaques, you know, because we do have a like a counterterrorism unit out of uh, on Vesey Street, um, and mm -hmm. it's a joint unit. You know, other agencies from New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, the state police, every law enforcement, a, a lot of different law enforcement agencies work out of there. Um, you know, the messaging has been clear. You know, not to block the bus stops, not to block the crosswalks. You know, because you know, internally, you know, when when someone calls 311 on these cars that are with the placards, it's not the first precinct responding, it's internal affairs responding or or an inspections oh. unit. That's what so it's, you know, those cops or whoever's responsible for that vehicle, they are getting in trouble, like they are being disciplined. There is a lot of this. So it's not just, hey, I, I got to take a big deal. It's there's this discipline that follows. So it is the messaging has been clear on that. So hopefully um it's you know if they you know that, that that component of it is being corrected um you know so like it's it's going to be difficult because those tlc cars are, they just keep circling the block um yeah so we we are moving them like i i like i told you today we moved them um i also noticed a, a boot on a, one of the cars and then i got the complaint from the hotel so there there is there is a lot more eyes in that area uh, as far as the, the stop sign on battery place, that's historically been an issue for us. Um, and I know yeah. there's, we've, we've commissioned the DOT to do, uh, traffic studies in that area. Um, you know, you know, to put a light there, but it, it just, it just yeah. doesn't seem. It just doesn't, I guess it doesn't meet whatever standard they have. Uh, to put one there, but the, I, I think it would be a good idea to, to have it there. <laughs> Yeah, by the school but, would be a great idea, and then at, at West Thames also because they blow through that. But yeah, I mean, listen, when I used to write summons, is that that would be the location I would go to. Um, and mm -hmm. but um, unfortunately, you know, <laughs> it's it has to be a lot of there's more. We need more education than some because mm -hmm. you can summon all day long. You're not going to correct over there because because the way they just speed right through it, it, it actually is dangerous. Um, so. Yeah. So that's pro that's going to be another target location for our, our our additional traffic traffic officer. That's going to be um, his primarily job. Primary job is going to be the summons, you know, write summonses. Um, and as it relates to the school crossing guards, there is a shortage, in I guess downtown. Um, yeah. and a lot of these a, a lot of these uh, jobs are. Most of the people who take these jobs live in their neighborhood or, or they live a block away where they could come out in the morning, cross the kids, go back home and then come back uh, and cross the kids in the afternoon. Um, what we're finding is a lot of these crossing guards are coming like the ones that are taking the are accepting the jobs. They either from the Lower East Side or someplace uptown um, and it's not feasible for them to go back and forth. Um, mm -hmm. And. You know they're there for a little bit and then they wind up quitting uh, because they, you know, in the commute, so paying for food down back and forth, it financially doesn't make sense for them. So th that's the challenge we're having with that, and you know it's hard to retain uh, crossing guards when we do get them. Um, so there is a, you know, we, we do have flyers out to, if people want to sign up. You know everything's online. You know we, we encourage that. So. Well, that makes sense. Jimmy, go ahead. Uh, you have a question. Yeah. Sort of people can kind of do kind of target enforcement. Like, for example, Murray Street, I like, just, you know, like, every afternoon, you got these um, SUVs or like triple parking, pick up the uh, finance girls coming out of 
for the sack. <laughs> so, you know, it's not the same time. When it rained, like yesterday, when it poured down, it becomes really dangerous. I mean, you just can't see. Right? <laughs> Vision is low. There's car moving. You can't see where the car's coming. And you got this huge SUV, triple parking on Murray Street. Right? And that's where, where Asphalt Green is. That's where the mall is. You know, and they usually like when you know, their business, you know, they were coming out of work around like four, four or five o'clock, just showed up, right? Tickets, they get paid for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, they'll pay for it. That's right. Well, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and you know, we also at that time, like our our radio is busy with 911 calls as well. Um, right, you, you know, so. Like I, like I said, we, we did, we are adding an extra officer to the, I want to say pre pandemic, we had a, that unit was six or seven officers. Now we were, we were down to two and now we're, we're, we're trying to get that up to three. Um, it, you know, it, and you know, there's, it's, it's regular, you know, they'll go out and write summonses, but you know, to pull up, to stop and write a summons, it's a whole process too. It's not like you know, it's not like the traffic agent where they just scan the, the barcode and they move on to the next one. You know, it's a whole car stop essentially, and there's a lot of documentation that goes to it. You know, so it's not you know while you're doing that, there's 30 other violations happening. So it it, it is an uphill battle. Um, we're aware of it, and we'll, we'll do our best to, to clear it. Okay. We also. A lower Broadway is the same way. Lower Broadway is down to one lane, essentially one person double parks, and now you you essentially have yeah. one lane and you have buses. You know, so we have that that same issue of the double and triple park cars are also on Broadway as well. So you got Battery Park City, you got Broadway, and then you know we, we also have, have it up and around uh, the federal 26 Federal Plaza that area as well. So it's you know it, you know you, you're trying to plug all the holes. You know can't get to them all that that makes sense go ahead Betty so do you think you agree it makes some sense to get citizen reporting to at reported underlying NYC mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's a great app I, that's a great app I wasn't aware of that that app existed and there was consequences <laughs> uh, for that you know um that's something we should, you know, we should all be messaging out there. You know, that would change their behavior if, if it affects their TLC license and um, their um, if, if they need to go for renewals, if they need to re renew their TLC permits. You know, if, if that if that holds some weight to it, you know, that would quickly change their behavior in that area. It does, and they find them, and they can process them, and they also report the three one one. But it is a mechanism people can go on Twitter and just use to. That within their report and give the police a lot of bother. That that's great because then if they get they're being held accountable mm -hmm. without having the police take yeah. care of it because at the end of the day there's a lot more that they should be paying attention to, or it could be paying attention to. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, that makes sense. Anybody else have any questions? No. I don't see any hands online. So, Officer Ayadana, thank you so much for coming and giving right. us that information. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Nick. Good night. You're welcome. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Just, just as a quick plug, uh, Battery Park City is one of the best kept secrets in New York City. Um, they do a great job down there. Nick, me and you, we talk all the time. Um, but they do, you, you know, it's one of the nicest parts of the city, I think. So, you guys are really are doing a good job down there. We're the fortunate ones. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. All right. Yeah. All right. Good night. All right. Good night. So, Patrick Murphy, EPC security analyst. And then we do um, Mr. Spordone. The program is just. Sorry. I know where I got to go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I like the green. Yes. Get the I need to um, Do you want? There's a chair in the I'm sorry. Do you want Betty to come back in April or May? Or well, I think so. I think if we can, if we can meet. Back. Yeah, I do. If we can, if we can meet and do and make decisions, I think the working group. I think you're right, Jeff. I think mm -hmm. we should focus mostly on 
I'm just trying to so it's a practical no, matter to get something it done. Does. And this is really important to yeah. yeah. And she's talking about daylighting and DOT stuff, but the authority is going to need to get involved. So Nick, I, I think it's going to, you're going to need to be part of it. Yeah, please, yeah. please yeah. keep me, please keep me. So uh, that would be great. Yeah. So Jimmy, Betty, Sarah, me, you, it. that's it. And Sarah. Yeah, and whatever form it takes, get together, yeah. call, chat, combination. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, we could do it that way. All right. No, I think that makes sense. So that's a takeaway. And then <laughs> we can follow up with, with Betty in uh, June. I love it. A few months. Whatever, two months maybe will be enough time to get the back. Yeah. All right. Pat, thank you so much. Good evening. Okay. Uh, in the month of February, uh, there was 19,278 reports that were made, uh, which also included the GO tags. So, uh, as per uh, the report, you can see that graffiti, we ended up having uh, four reports dealing with that. And that was uh, yeah. basically dealing with Teardrop Park, uh, Teardrop Park, the garbage cans, and uh, Rockefeller Park. They actually wrote on the seawall by uh, the Ulysses. Oh, wow. So, uh, the seawall by the Ulysses? How do you know? Oh, then. Quick scan, can of paint. Shh. Under spray can. Wow. Hang on, right on top. Right on top on the flat oh, that's terrible. So, um, I love Ulysses, by the way. So, uh, working with uh, Ryan, we uh, shoot out an email and her team was out there to take it out, uh, take it away the next day. Uh, homeless, we interacted with uh, six in 2024. 2023, uh, we interacted with only with five. Lost and found property, uh, we had four uh, reports this year. Uh, for park rules, uh, we were dealing with five, dealing with park rules, last year was three. Vendor solicitation has been at zero. Dogs, uh, we've had four uh, interactions with dog owners over uh, last year where we only had one. So uh, the other thing I wanted to bring up, which I uh, said I would give you the follow-up from the last. So uh, on Wednesday, February 28th, the Battery Park City Authority, which is uh, Raj Mann, Eric Munson, and Nicholas Spordone and I, uh, met with uh, Captain Joel Rosenthal at the first precinct. At this meeting, the captain informed us that the 49-year-old male Hispanic who was found in Rector Park died of an overdose. Okay, that's uh, what that was. And that was the 28th or 20th? Of that was, uh, yeah. yeah. The meter. You know, I know he died in there. Okay. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to bring up, uh, one of the safety ambassadors interacted with a uh, what we described as a possible homeless person was walking around with a push cart down around the south end. Mm -hmm. So we're talking battery place and third place and uh, convinced them to ask for help. So she reached out and called upon the homeless services, their command center, and passed off company iPhone to him. Okay. And they had that conversation and Got the phone back and <laughs> off he went to uh, whatever they agreed upon. That's very nice. He left the really property. Pop, so that, that is like the thumb Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, really it. Um, the key thing from the meeting at the first precinct is this scam with the phones. Okay. Huge wow. problem still. Um, it's they still see it coming back. Yeah. And, and yeah, I know. It seems like it's. Why would you do that? Because I, 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 I want to help you. And you're like, okay, sure. Yeah, I just see that. They're very good at doing that. Right. And when you, let's say you're going to donate $5, well, that $5 just became $2,400. Wow. Okay. And the, these people are smart enough to put the phone on air mode so that when you get the phone back, you don't see You don't see it click back to you. Right. Like, yeah. Right. Coming back to you until it's wow. way too late. 
Oh, okay. Okay. The lesson there is, don't as we said last time, don't give anybody your phone. Yeah, don't give anybody. Which sounds like an obvious thing, but if you're trying to be helpful to somebody, the analogy that the captain gave me, which really kind of stuck out, incredibly obvious, and I'm ashamed I didn't think of it. He's like, think of your phone as your wallet. Like, yeah, yeah. as much as you have in your wallet, fine. It's mm -hmm. nothing. Compared to nothing. So yeah. you wouldn't hand somebody your wallet, right? No. Don't hand me your phone. No, right. and I mean, in terms of and the people who are asking for money just because they want to eat something, whatever. I mean, if you have the time, go with them to the store and buy them. Yeah, if you really you feel that, like, but don't, don't, don't hand them. Don't hand, don't them, hand them. And then if you don't want to hand people cash, um, my husband has a really great idea that he does. He goes and buys um, McDonald's gift cards for $5 yeah. and he just hands them out. And so, the Don, you know, look what's in the neighborhood, right? So McDonald's, but yeah, he does it. So yeah, he's got his, he's got, he's got his uh, crew that he goes there. Yeah. But that's a good idea. Yeah. Right. So I think that's a nice, a much nicer way to do it. Mm -hmm. You can still help people, and at least you know it's going to food. Yeah. Right. So uh, the other thing, which uh, somewhat goes on in my neighborhood, but is definitely what's going on here. Uh, we had a person going around trying all of our doors. Ooh. Okay, because everything is keyless entry now on these new cars. So uh, I still find it hard to believe that people leave the second key in their car. Okay. Okay, in the glove box or in the console, they really do. And, uh, you know, you just walk up and you can touch it because it will open up. Because the coffee is inside. Right. So. Uh, they were doing that up on uh, North End Avenue. And so, uh, we Did they actually get a car? No. Not yet. Okay. Uh, they were observed, caught, and. That's interesting. That's a really good spirit. catch because that's not really where you're patrolling. Or is it? Because you've got the dog park in the middle? Uh, well, it, it was up around uh, Six River. Okay. Six River. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, it got all caught. It got caught there. Okay. Okay. Um, also, uh, Ryan's people were also involved in court in catching the guys. So it was like, you got to leave. Go. Yeah, go. Goodbye. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So obviously, uh, he didn't get into any of the cars that was there. And but it's just a very as, good uh, thing. FYI. Yeah. Well, in my neighborhood, they, they leave it, they park the car in, the garage, in uh, their driveway and they leave it in. Or they leave the key by their side door where the yeah. car is parked and it's still you can still have access because it's still wow. and uh, they go in and they steal whatever change is in there and <laughs> whatever else you have in your <laughs> bag. Funny. So, so, so thank it. you. And thank you for the extended information. That is very useful. Thank you. Uh, every time. So thank Thanks you so much. much. Thank welcome. you for listening. And working with us and then mm -hmm. you know, thumbs up. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, all right, I will go quick so I stop coughing in a minute. Ten minutes. Not even. Not even. All right. I went through this in advance over the course of the evening and weeded out the things I like to highlight. So I won't go into everything. All right. But it is all here for the record, obviously. Um, so thank you. Uh, isn't that wonderful? Is that one of your pieces? That's one of that. That was uh I was from yeah, that was from my Instagram, I think a little while ago, but I do love it. I love the picture. I'm just uh I do take some care to go through and see what might be the nice kind of image. Beautiful. And especially since we're kind of leading into spring, I figure it was a nice again with Ryan's presentation. So thank you, Jim. Do it with your phones? Yeah. <laughs> this is our our folks, our folks. Um that might actually been, might have been some from someone who sent it to us. I don't know. It's a nice picture, though. Um, all right, so second page, we, the winter calendar, as you know, is in full swing. We're almost getting ready, believe it or not, for the summer in May. But we have some events that are coming up, especially for St. Patrick's Day. Keepsakes Ireland is our Saturday family workshop this Saturday for kids. It's a live performance with violinist uh, Liz Henley, um, some arts and crafts and opportunities for the family to enjoy it. And we have a meet urban naturalist coming up on next Wednesday. That's part of Women's History Month generally. Our outdoor educator, Marika, will be uh, doing a nature walk and sharing some of her experiences from uh, with and uh, related to environmental education. We have a movie night coming up and we have New York Laughs on the 21st, uh, also in celebration of Women's History Month with uh, DJ Susan Zianth. You probably know she opens a lot of our concerts for River and Blues and whatnot. So you'll you know, you'll know her if you've been to some of those events. 
And then moving on to the, the next page, I did want to draw your attention to our blood drive coming up in April. Uh, we do these uh, every so often, and I always make it a point to thank the people in uh, and around Battery Park City since June of 2020, when we started during the pandemic, uh, nearly 1,600 donations uh, have been made by the Battery Park City Authority. And again, it's not just one donation. Uh, it's not a one-to-one. -one. A single donation can, can serve up to three, save up to three lives, depending upon yeah. where it goes. So it's really wonderful. Yeah. That's got, a little further out. That's in April, but that's April 3rd. So before I come back to you next, we'll have the blood drop. March is Women's History Month, as you may or may not know. There's a number of events going on throughout the city and the state, not just in Battery Park City. Tomorrow is International Women's Day. So, um, we're purple. If you uh, want to do that, we'll be doing so with the Battery Park City Authority. Uh, and I linked there a note that Governor Hochul had put out uh, announcing that the Women's History Month exhibition had opened in the New York State Capitol. But there's also, obviously, and of course, an online exhibit, which is linked to uh, as well. Um, Northwest, we covered this last month. I put the picture in again, I know, because Zach especially got such a kick out of being <laughs> featured in the report. Um, but the next upcoming date is obviously next Monday, not this coming Monday. Monday the 18th will be at APC. Um, to talk through some updates on the project as promised and as a follow on to what we did here at the BPC committee in January. Um, next thing, big touch point will be, and I don't have an exact date yet, but roughly in the early June timeframe. I'd like to try and get this out as soon as we can. Probably next week we'll be able to nail down that date. But in the early June timeframe, uh, we'll probably have our next like big uh, meeting for the 60% design, but that's more than that's everything. Your meeting. Our meeting, uh, the follow-up to what we did in November, yeah. with all the work and the feedback we've continued to get from the community uh, in that period, including at BPC, January at EPC in a couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and ideally, I'd like to try to get the calendar with, you know, a number of months in advance so people can plan around it. So that not, not completely locked down yet, but looking like mm -hmm. the early June timeframe. Well in advance and when school is out, so we're going to have folks make sure that they attend. Um, Sal, if you go to the next page there, thank you, Zach. Sal, thank you, thank you Katie, for reporting and for staying. Um, that's the same traffic advisory we had up last month, but that's just that's going to be throughout the end of the year. But you can see that area in orange is just for the parking lane. And again, if you want to get on the regular updates, so you can get the bi-weekly updates that go out and or any other traffic advisories that happen in the interim, there will be times when we have to do some work on the lane overnight when traffic is lower. You'll get on that list so you can get all those traffic advisories. And for the most part, you know, we do these things with an eye toward uh, getting the project done in a safe and quick manner, but also minimizing uh, public and community impact. Okay, scroll down then to the next page, if you please wouldn't mind. Thank you. We touched on this, so I won't do it again, but again, scam alert. Don't give everybody your phone. And I make it a point every month to remind our dog owners overall, again, we love the dogs. Please keep them off the lawns and the artwork and other other hard, other hard surfaces fine but not lawns not green space not planters not artwork yeah. okay um homeless assistance i put in there last month pat touched on it again i'm going to leave it there generally so folks know that it's there for them uh, to be able to click in and parks happenings we covered so um i won't i won't belabor it but i did want to make it a point to say that the ball fields have been converted from their winter uh, configuration to the spring and summer because softball, I'm sorry, baseball and soccer is all coming up. And on the next page, there's Zach, thank you. It is indeed compost at bpca.ny.gov. That's the dedicated compost address. So if you have questions or comments or issues with composting generally in Battery Park City, I can do that. And then right next to it, you'll see the little sign yes and no. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what well, we do accept it. What we don't accept, okay. that's that. We'll continue to push that out, and I can send it at large, large image if you want to put it in your newsletter as well. But that's that's really helpful. Um, some highlights of what happened uh, in the past month, programming wise. Key Apex Guatemala on the twenty fourth, and then Zach, if you wouldn't mind, thank you. The next page, we had um, our closing of the annual art exhibition, which is uh, really great. But of course, that also exists mm -hmm. on our YouTube page online. And for those who are unaware, this is. Over the course of the year, we run a series of art programs um, that many local uh, neighbors and friends and residents participate in. And the annual art exposition is an opportunity for them to showcase, showcase what they've worked on over the course of the year. And previously, it uh, has a physical incarnation. 
um, in Six River Terrace for a month, and then it exists online in perpetuity as part of a virtual annual art exhibition. Um, next board meeting is March 21st. Again, I know it this last time, but please note the new date. It was March 6th. It's March 21st. And then the last thing I would add, we have our first precinct community council meeting, as you know, the last Thursday of every month. The last thing I would add is Energy Observer. I talked about last time they've scaled back the event a bit, um, but we should be getting, I think, from Brookfield next week, a little more details on that right now. It looks like it's just going to be the vessel in the marina, not an additional activation of the waterfront plaza space. Mm -hmm. More details to come from them about what the programming and scheduling will be. Go ahead. So I'm going to ask you about that because yeah. um, <clears throat> my biggest question is, is it is still open to the public? I believe so, but I want to, I, I don't know. You don't want to say, no, I, I did ask her, she didn't quite answer me. I don't, I don't know. I asked the same question. I was like, this is news to me that's been scaled back, but whatever the situation yeah. is, but I do want to make sure that they get, I want the answer, I'll make sure that they get used the answer as well. My yeah. guess is, they would likely want to still have some type of public I was interface. Saying, right? I just don't know that it will be able to be as robust because it's, it's going to be on the boat. Space yeah, it's yeah. just in the vessel. Nonetheless, um, I or you will follow up by way of them because I want to get the feedback. They got to give us the information. Um, and that makes sense. But one more thing to say on yeah. that concept. Yeah. So Brookfield does a lot of activities. They do they basketball things, that, yeah. which is more to just throw a ball, right? But but tennis, they play. They they do different things. They do on the the summer, summer, generally, especially when the weather gets back. They do that, and then um, they used to block off time for the community to have certain slots for that stuff. And they I do don't, like tennis, and sometimes like the tennis open and stuff like that. Yeah, I, and I don't think that they're doing that still. And I'd love to get that back. So that's kind of why I was pushing her, uh, Peyton, about the questions for the for this uh, Energy Observer. Okay. Because it sounds like a really cool thing. It'd be great for the schools, whatever else. But also the community. Yeah. To go. I, I, and I, I don't so. want us locked out because, uh, you know, Brookfield's tenants, no, I they fill it up first. I will, I will relay that to them. And I would have no reason to believe that they wouldn't want to have an interest in opening it up. But let me relay to them. But think about that and then, for the because I know you speak with them more. And, and they used to come regularly. They don't come so much anymore. But there's not, I mean, yes. whatever. We haven't even asked them. But it would be really nice to always say, hey, how about something for the, give it time for the community to sign up. You know, not all day. But yeah. Give us certain so, hours. Okay. Uh, and then um, we could cover this congestion council hearings for this week. Uh, just as a last reminder, you can submit comments online through March 11th, all the means to do so there. And then uh, the last thing I think Benny may ended up coming or addressing uh, questions that the transportation committee had about the 9 11 walk and run the other night, I think mostly. But the good news there is. Again, I'll be back again before this happens. That's Sunday, April 28th. So it's the end of April. That's the annual 9 11 Memorial Running Walk 5K. Um, bottom line here up front is no change to the route from last year. So last year, the route had changed slightly because of the construction that had just started as part mm -hmm. of the South Project. No change to that route. And as far as I know, we didn't get a lot of complaints or any last year. But what I know they didn't do last year was come to you, and I'm glad they did this. Year to make sure that you guys have your questions answered. And you guys did it last night, so thank you. Yes. Um, and that's it. Thank you, Thank you. I think right. you did 10 minutes. Hold on. Huh? Questions, nothing? Nothing. All right. I think we can shut down this meeting. All right. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Guys, we can yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Justine.